Thank you for acknowledging that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the December 20th Board of Selectmen meeting. My name is John Arena. Tonight concludes the, the fourth of four meetings held in December for the purpose of reviewing the details and context of both the town and schools, uh, elements of the town and schools budget. This will further be complemented by other discussions that occur in the month of January. The purpose of tonight's visit and the three that preceded it were a direct response to comments received by the public and our Board of Selectmen survey taken in August up to the first week of September, which clearly stated that more data, more, more clarity, and more context was needed. We trust that these have helped, and if, if any of you are watching either on broadcast or on replay, urge you to get in touch with any member of the board if you have any further questions. With that, um, I will, uh, I presume there are no I have, have a quick follow-up from last night, John, when I talked about the Climate Advisory S Committee sunset clause. Um, in our, I think it was our July meeting, we voted to extend them to December 31st, 2017. Um, and you guys, and it's on the website as being sunset at the end of this month. Um, you guys indicated that we had extended them. Thought we did. I thought we did. I couldn't it find it. I looked through the minutes, and I couldn't find it. would be somewhat unusual to make it end of December, yeah. but it's, I guess it's not a surprise. Oh, two years is in my plan. Yeah, uh, we'd have to look. That sounds like a surprise, but we'll have to go well, back so, and check. So if no stuff. action is taken, is that automatically means that they're sunset, or should we make a preliminary well, they motion? Can't, they, they can't meet till you re reconstitute yeah. them. It's not a big yeah. deal. I looked so through the... they meet in January, you know, before January 9th. Uh, I want to do a provisional three months till we get this straightened out. I, but I think, yeah, you, you can certainly do that. I mean... Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to mind. It's not on the agenda. Yeah, I don't think it's any of our intentions to let that no. happen. No. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion to extend them until March. This last thirty. Is there thirty first? Thirty first. I'll second that. Two thousand eighteen. Yep. Two thousand eighteen. Okay. I have motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Five zero. So again, we'll check it. It may have already been. Yeah, I could have missed it. I went okay. through the minutes, but any other comments? Thanks, Andy. Okay. Nothing. Nothing, any public comment before we open up the evening. Okay, thank you. Brian, Jeff? Good welcome. evening. <laughs> the chairman, thank you. Uh, and then there was DPW. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 Ryan, he you knows Ryan, uh, uh, first of all, the town engineer, he and I are going to double team this, uh, certain parts of it. Uh, I'm going to start out kind of giving a, an overview. Um, of the changes, really, the summary changes between FY18 and FY19, as well as a little uh, description of each division within Public Works, just to kind of outline that as a, as a starting point. Um, once you go, go through this process, Ryan's going to give like an overview on the uh, capital program, going through a bunch of major projects we're working on, and then I'll pick it back up again with some, some handouts uh, that I think uh, the board will find interesting and the public will find interesting regarding uh, recycling program and uh, C-click fix program and some other things that we've been within the department we've been we've been working on. So um, I wouldn't feel too bad about going last, Jeff. I mean, <laughs> you know, the first shall be last. <laughs> well, that's right. I was going to say that too. <laughs> um, and with a name like Zaya, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, FY18 budget uh, compared to FY19, we've got one uh, full-time FTE that's uh, increased. Um, the budget is up 5.7% uh, uh, total public works budget, 3,543,100. And again, it's a 5.7% increase. Um, starting with the administration uh, division, administration uh, supports the department with procurement administration, uh, budget preparation and coordination, departmental personnel and payroll services, accounts payable, uh, processing cemetery administration services and responses to public inquiries and uh, just overall concerns uh, from the public. Um, on the administration division, salaries are increased uh, by 17.25%. This reflects the addition of one full-time clerk uh, to provide both payroll and bureau support functions, as well as in line with the division's uh, secession plan, uh, which we started a number of years ago, um, and this would be another component of, of, that, uh, of that program. Also, a senior administrative assistant uh, is increasing to 40 hours to uh, help uh, cover some of the uh, uh, clerical duties within the uh, cemetery d division. Um, 
Okay. Also within the salaries is a minor increase uh, projected for uh, for uh, increase in the uh, negotiation of contracts that will be upcoming. Uh, expenses are increased 2.4% uh, just reflects some additional advertising costs. So forth. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> They're very orderly. That's right. That's sorry. Um, and that's, so that's administration. Going to the uh, engineering division. Uh, this is Ryan's favorite. Uh, the engineering division <laughs> provides uh, services to all departments within the town of Reading. Division is responsible for preparation of plans, contract documents, specifications, and estimates, survey layout, inspection, design and construction management of town construction projects, upkeep of traffic markings, signals, review of subdivision plans and site plans for accuracy and conformance with the subdivision uh, rules and regulations, uh, review of conservation submittals, preparation of subdivision and conservation bond estimates, inspection of subdivision construction, and administration of a pavement management program, uh, and Chapter 90, a roadway improvement program. The division also provides technical assistance and guidance on various town projects, performs traffic uh, studies, uh, regulates and inspects private construction activities in the town, responsible for the maintenance of all records concerning the subdivisions of land, roadway, water and sewer, drainage, construction, town maps, issuance of street addresses, updating 911 address records, and the issues of other, other various permits. Um, it's a lot. And uh, um, we'll talk a little bit uh, later about uh, some of the issues we're having right now with some staffing issues and so forth in the department uh, that uh, uh, Ryan's going to talk a little bit about in more detail. But um, uh, the, uh, actually, the salaries in the engineering are up 11.9%. We're looking for an additional uh, engineering aid position to be added this year in the budget to uh, support the office uh, field coverage. Um, with a number of uh, projects, uh, things that I've just mentioned, as well as a lot of the capital projects, uh, there are times when uh, the, uh, the public would, would come in. And we have a lot of uh, counter traffic, a lot of public coming in to, to look at maps and to for a lot of various questions. And uh, especially during construction season, there's a lot of times where there's just not an engineer available. And uh, very politely, we take the name and number and, and we get back to them. But uh, uh, that's one of the issues that uh, we're going to run. I'll talk a little bit about later on. Um, Going on to the uh, highway division, uh, the highway stormwater division, responsible for construction and maintenance of all public roadways, catch basins, drainage, sidewalks, traffic, street signs, snow plowing, sanding and salting operations, and, and snow removal. Uh, in addition, the equipment maintenance division provides daily and preventive maintenance services for over 130 vehicles, equipment, townwide, including police, fire, school, facilities, and the, obviously the Public Works Department. Jeff, for this and the other categories, do you also have the dollar amounts in addition to the percentages? Uh, we have those, uh, yeah, we have those, actually there's another slide, we'll show those. Okay, that'll be helpful, thank you. Um, the uh, highway increase in salaries is 5.2%. Uh, again, this reflects the addition of uh, long-term seasonal workers to help support the, uh, the crews, uh, as well as a, uh, again, uh, projected potential contract uh, uh, slate increase. Um, expenses are level funded. Fuel expense actually was decreased this year again, uh, but that de uh, decrease is offset by uh, some outsourced repair uh, accounts that uh, need some adjustment, as well as a, uh, some of the painting accounts, line painting accounts. Um, stormwater uh, salaries are de actually decreased by 11.9%. That basically reflects a turnover of personnel. Uh, there's a slide later on that. Um, shows a, a number of changes in the, in the department over the last five years. Um, I, I estimate about a third of the personnel has changed in five years, including all five supervisors. So there's been a lot of change, a lot of staff changing, promotion, a lot of younger uh, you know, workers coming in. Uh, so there's been some major changes with the personnel structure. And by turnover here, you mean that very circumstance where somebody senior is retired, somebody new has come in. Right. Thank you. Um, going to uh, cemetery, cemetery division, responsible for the preservation, care, and embellishment of our beautiful cemeteries, including Laurel Hill, Forest Glen, Charles Lawn, Wood End. Um, salaries are increased by 10.3%. Again, this reflects one additional long-term seasonal employee, uh, as well as uh, a replacing equipment operator position from a, from a labor slot. Um, expenses are increased uh, based, uh, for supplies, equipment, and various material accounts within the uh, Cemetery division. Jeff, um, what's the meaning of the term long term? Are you talking about full time versus it's part time? It's long term seasonal, which basically runs from approximately April 1st to December 1st. 
So there's long-term seasonal okay. and short-term seasonal. We have some short-term seasonal people that, summer like college over. kids, will come in for the summer, June, July, August. Uh, and then the long-term seasonals come in uh, roughly about April 1st, and they'll go to approximately December 1st. Uh, and then with the, uh, again, Parks Forestry Division uh, maintains uh, street trees, grounds for all town properties, parks, schools, ball fields, playgrounds, tennis courts, and municipal school buildings. The division also maintains the compost center, and uh, they are in charge of setting up the holiday lights, so we always do a good job with that. Um, the salary in the parks is increased by 5%, again, reflecting one additional long-term uh, seasonal uh, person. Uh, expenses are increased by 9.8%, uh, which again, supplies, license, and contract services. Uh, basically what it comes down to uh, is the increase, it's approximately $142,000 increase for all these positions. If you eliminate those positions, the long-term seasonals, the intern engineering, and the clerk in administration, the budget is up 1.9%. So it's, it's a small increase. Again, the whole uh, increase really is that 5.7% It comes down to those, those positions. Do you have a slide that shows that, the summary that you mentioned earlier? Uh, sure we do. Oh, no. I don't think we do, but I could I, I could get you that. Uh, it might be helpful to amend this with just a table that shows each of the, the baseline percentage increase, the dollar increase okay. proposed. We should probably put together a um, an Excel spreadsheet from each one of the departments doing exactly the same thing. Maybe yeah. summarize, because, I mean, this has been like drinking out of a fire hose you know, these last well, few nights. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff is pouring in. Bring a smiling back there. Uh, <laughs> Unintended. Yeah. This is DPW. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying, though. I mean, if we could, I'll give you some of that later tonight, and the rest of it in early January. Yeah, because if we, if, I mean, it's, it's, it's really as simple as a, like a spreadsheet with tabs. Yep. Um, um, just to uh, uh, just quickly on accommodated costs, um, as you know, we're increasing the snow and ice budget. Uh, it's four percent. Kind of getting back to our uh, program, we were at one point had a goal of getting like a 10 year average for snow and ice. So we, my first few years, I think we were bumping it up 25, 30,000 dollars a year, and then we got away from it for a couple of years. And uh, this bumps it up. Uh, we're not there yet, but it's uh, <coughs> progress towards that, that goal. Um, street lighting is reduced just based on, on past history. Uh, I've talked with Bob about that, and um, it's reduced 11.1 percent. The, uh, the solid waste recycling program uh, is up uh, 3 percent to the uh, we have a 10-year contract or two years into it, so that'll continue on. Uh, I do have a slide later on on the recycling program, um, and one of the concerns, well, I just briefly mentioned now that uh, we're having a lot of problems. With, we're not having a lot of problems here. A lot of communities with JRM are having problems. We have a few with some contamination of the recycling uh, material that we're putting out. People are putting in things that just not appropriate, not recyclable. So, um, and they're getting to a point where some of the uh, equipment and some of the, uh, the processing uh, uh, areas that they have, uh, factories are um, uh, having a zero tolerance policy uh, as far as recycling contamination. So um, the other problem is actually, that, and again, we've ad we addressed this about a year ago and really, uh, we, d we did really well. We're starting to slip a little bit. Again, not, we have issues here, but much more so in other communities that the, the JRM is involved with. Uh, but people, again, putting their plastic recycles in the plastic bags. That's a no-no. Okay. It's just, it, it messes up the whole system and it, sh it uh, which, uh, the uh, equipment, machinery gets shredded. It's, Bags uh, I guess it's a nightmare. So. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, but again, yeah. it's, uh, and again, after slide, we're still doing really well. I mean, we're still in the upper 20s percentage-wise for recycling, which is which is really good for a community that doesn't have a pay-as-you-throw system. I mean, it's it's still at the, at the top. Yeah, one quick go back. So snow and ice increased by 4%. I thought our strategy was intentionally to keep it, say, below the 10-year average because of the yeah, reimbursement. Yeah, it, it's well below still. It's still, okay, so yeah. This, it's, this still keeps it there. I think we're up to 6 65 or 70 percent of right, right, right. Yeah, and then street lighting reduced that's the labor to maintain street lights that's that, the, no, that's the renewal city. process that's, that's the energy that's the energy bill from the energy from, from, yeah, that, uh, that's where it sits okay. in the budget and how far how what's our retrofit how far through the system are we in terms of retrofitting street lights at this point Did you guess halfway two-thirds three-quarter uh they've been working on it um I know we're working here in other communities. I would say, like, yeah, 40, 50 percent, something I mean, like Colleen that. Colleen O'Brien's presentation with RMLD, I think she said she had one more good year, maybe yeah. a little bit of a trail off into the following. So that would say maybe you've got 
another 5% yeah. reduction that you might enjoy in coming yeah. years. Medical has gone down since over the last like, two or three years. I think it's gone down. You know, uh, that's got to be tied to the lights. Yeah. And the bulbs. Yeah. I didn't know if it was labor or energy, but now, now it makes sense. It's energy. Bill? Um, when, he used, when he used to make it, he's still Bill Brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you reduce your energy costs, but your cost of the plant keeps going up. If you look at your bill, the, charge, the RMLD charges you to be a customer, and that has gone up steadily. And on the, uh, thank you, Bill. Um, on the contamination, is it just plastic bags, or are there other uh, key examples that you want to? Let me just. Uh, this is your. It's other. It's other issue. It's other material. Um, there are people sitting by their TV waiting right. to hear this. Contamination. <laughs> <laughs> contamination levels recycling has become a serious issue when unmarketable materials. Residents continue to include diapers, wooden crates, gas jugs, paint cans, garden hoses, oh. Christmas lights. And worst of all, plastic bags in the recycling. Again, I don't, like this was a letter that went out to I think, all the community, That's so fine. I'm not sure what the degree okay. is here, but in general, those are the things that they're concerned about. All right, thank you. Yes. Um, and, and before Ryan uh, starts talking about some of the capital projects, I think, John, maybe answer some of your questions. The, uh, I get this from, from Jean, I like, I like the color of her chat, so I think we'd uh, <laughs> do a color chat. Um, the red is the uh, current uh, position that are vacant. An engineer, you got the senior civil engineer. That was Ryan's old position of prior to his promotion to town engineer. And also the uh, forestry parks cemetery supervisor position is still vacant. Uh, we're trying to fill that. Um, and just, uh, you know, right. it's, it's been an issue um, for a while. Go full screen. And then kind of scan across. Is that a Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 Um, the, the green is, is the uh, positions that are uh, requesting that the uh, temporary uh, long-term seasonal uh, in the highway, in the box of forestry in the cemetery. Uh, also in water and sewer, looking to change two short-term seasonals to a long-term. Um, and, and I also had a clerk. Um, we do uh, also, in your notice of engineering, we'll look at it's the en temporary engineering that I made. Uh, I mentioned earlier, 27,500. Um, and we do uh, provide services the trails committee and town forest committee on occasion uh, they'll ask for some help with either some labor some material so forth uh, they do have budgets uh, I think they each have a thousand dollar budget that they can draw down from for and they have a lot of volunteer projects and so forth so we uh, work with them and also we well now we have a process online where people can book the town forest online a lot of the scouting groups people go out online can book it and uh, we give them the rules and regulations and so forth so that's worked out pretty well with the folks. So Jeff before you move on to that um, on your first slide it said that you were going um, changing to uh, one more FTE. In one full-time FTE. Oh, okay, because right. there's a lot of green in there. It looks like it adds right. up to more than one. Right. Is that, um, I mean, that it, are there corresponding positions that are not filled or um, as to sort of get to one or? No, these are all new. Okay. So in terms of uh, the one full-time was, was the clerk and these are all? Just fractions of another position. Right. If you add them all. Right. So that be probably that adds up to kind of, you know, uh, three? Maybe? Maybe a couple, two positions, maybe. Okay, I, I just wasn't clear. Jeff, if, Jeff, if, I, if I could ask you, uh, I just want to make sure I'm following <clears throat> the, the staffing changes uh, with regards to the munis sheets. The, so the engineering temp help engineering aid, that's a new, new position? Correct. Um, we did have one. There has been one in the past, uh, two uh -huh. years ago. Yeah, yeah that's right. Two years ago. And is that seasonal or because the, sal so the salary is fairly low? Yeah, it's uh, well, it's an intern. For, uh, usually, it's thirty. It'd be whatever the co-op position. How it falls seasonally with yeah. the yeah. co-op position. <coughs> is it a full FTE? No, it's no, 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 no. 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 Okay, and then. Um, the then there there's another one with um, uh, temporary highway wages. Is that long, new? Long, long term seasonal. Correct. That's that's the long term seasonal. Correct. Okay, I got it. And then um, <coughs> and then the DPW senior admin admin assistant went up. 18.5%, is that a change in FTEs or is that just a salary bump? That's the hours. Yeah, we're going for 37 and a half to 40 hours. This okay. is going to be okay. as well as that. 
projected, you know, COLA cost of living increase as well. Thir but also going from 37 and a half to 40 hours Correct. a week. Okay. All right. Um, and I think, uh, and then a stormwater skilled laborer, uh, stormwater, Stormwater laborer, stormwater mechanic, uh, first class. Are you shifting a position there or something? Correct. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's a changeover in one position and shifting to another to another uh, uh, category. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Thanks. Um, is that red? Um, that red box is an empty box. Is that Bob Keating? Yes. Correct. Correct. Up, up top. Up top. Up top. Up top. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, so that didn't fill. We had it filled. Uh, we had it filled and then it emptied. Correct. And we had we had it filled again. And it emptied again. Well, it never really got. It never really got. <laughs> it, it was. No, it was it was a tough labor market. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yes. What do you? So, is that because of the scope of the work or because of the compensation, or both? I would say it's both. I think it's the uh, it's a lot. I mean, I'd to have that more the scope. To have that three divisions side. under one, you know, yeah. Pox Varsity Cemetery is a lot. I mean, it's very unusual. I mean, it's yeah. we've had it, Bob's been here for a long time, and that was the setup. And we knew going in that this could be a difficult one, uh, as as is to replace, uh, especially at, at the salary. Uh, um, and it's something that um, you know we've talked with Bob about, and is going forward that we have to look at that. Uh, salary. Just, you may have to rethink how you have that job structured. Correct. Is it uh, possible that turns into two jobs? The other issue yeah. here is it's a union job, so that's we can't do what we want. Just to oh, be clear. Yeah. That's the that's other. the newest. <coughs> yep. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, Bill. Yeah, the uh, temporary help, uh, the long-term seasonal help, will help us a lot. Uh, at one time, we had four seasonal, long-term seasonal, we're back to three months and help because uh, our business keeps increasing as people go down. Diana, <laughs> participate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> seems he's on shot. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Ryan's going to talk now a little bit about the uh, some of the capital programs uh, that are ongoing. I mean, we're going to, as you know, I mean, over the years we've had a very robust capital program, which uh, um, is, is continuing. You know, we're talking to to Bob about, you know, in the future, looking at that and um, making some uh, calculated uh, decisions to maybe move some things around. But right now, we've still got a lot of things going on. And again, this is probably beyond the things, some of the things we just finished up with NWRA and Mass DOT on West Street and Oak Street. This is this is our, thing, our stuff here. So I want you to talk a little bit about it if you want to. <coughs> um, so basically, I'll, I'll keep it nice and brief and short here. I don't want to bore everyone. But um, the projected 2018 proposed capital projects. Um, we started bringing in some of the schools, doing some site improvements, starting particularly at Joshua Eaton Elementary. Um, if anyone has frequented that uh, school, you'll know that that part of the lot and the sidewalk area is in disrepair. So we ad added that into the capital plan, um, and that's currently under design and projected to be uh, started on uh, this summer when uh, the school's out. Uh, we have a minor uh, Sturgis Park bank stabilization. Anyone who uh, does some ice skating out on that ice skating rink over there a few years ago, we had a blowout of the bank and um, did a temporary repair on that. This would be a more permanent fix and stabilizing the whole bank area. Um, that's currently also on the design. Is that where the dam is that you actually dam up? There's a portion that's over there that's eroded, yeah. and then if you go further down that ditch, right where the head wall is, we have a, an old head wall that's starting to fall down. It was made of uh, granite block, so the repairs will be done in both areas. Next is a, uh, a major project, uh, part of our master capital plan for our water improvements. Uh, probably one of the last big ones that we had to do in, in, in this group is the Main Street, Mill Street water main cleaning and lining. Um, it's roughly 14,000 linear feet, projected costs around 3.5 million. This is currently under design with one of our consultants. It will go from Salem Street to Mill Street. Mill Street will go from Main Street to the town line. Um, we needed to do this regardless mm. of whether or not uh, we were supplying water to other communities. Um, 
the additional uh, there will also be an additional 30 foot section um, down on the South Main Street part <coughs> that, uh, where we had a, a culvert crossing that needs to be done to be completed down there. It's important to note on, on a lot of these capital projects, uh, with the exception of the first two, um, we have hired out for engineering services, um, both for design and for inspectional services. And we, we also had a lot of projects this year where we had a lot of engineering services with the decrease of uh, staff that we had. Charles Street Sewer Pump Station is the third pump station in line with um, our sewer capital. We've uh, finished Batch Alder and West Street Sewer Pump Station this past year. Charles Street is a major sewer pump station. It services approximately 1,000 properties. Um, it's roughly 40 feet deep. Uh, it's Where's that it's, pump located? It's located at the intersection right at the of Charles intersection. and Havel Street in that I see. Okay. Area. Yeah, in that you're triangle. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Yep. Correct. Uh, it goes down about 40 feet. Wow. It's in severe disrepair. It's like it's, it's like a nightmare. <laughs> you're just trying to go down there. It's I've had I've been down like twice. It's a big area. I don't it's think you need to go into full detail. No, I don't think I do either. But it's just <laughs> anyway. It, it's well it needs to be done. So what was going on there this summer was were we figuring it out what was going on because it was it's, there was project going on there. We had construction the located at Batchelder on Naval yeah. Street, which was one of our other pump stations, right. which was in worse condition than this one. Mm -hmm. um, so are you using that as a staging area? Because there was equipment there a good part of the over, summer. Over the summer, there was equipment down on that drive. At the intersection? I don't know. Because it all got reseeded and, you know. Did, did we don't, don't know. That, yeah, that, I believe that was <coughs> uh, maybe a, a few summers ago. I don't, I don't remember. They run together. <laughs> We will be using it as a staging area when we do this right. project. That's not what we did. It may be when oh, we did yeah. Maybe when we did Havel Street, I think that might have been. Oh, that was yeah. a couple years ago. We used that as a staging area. Brian, a quick go back on the yes. water main. Um, that's a 24-inch main? Above. No, that is a 12-inch uh, cast iron main, unlined. <coughs> uh, it's probably important to note that this will help address some of the nitrification issue that we've had in town. So it's important that we do the cleaning and lining on, on this piece. This is a crucial piece to our improvements. Well, the only portion that gets replaced is the intersection. The other portion. Correct. All the intersections and new water surfaces. Thank you. That's so probably the original name, uh, water line. It came out from Mill Street Pumping Station. Your name on the side? No, I wasn't there. There's actually <laughs> that water main is 1890s. Yeah. It was wow. it's cast right into the side of the main. Made in the U.S. of A. Yeah. Yes, Mark. Sorry, I don't mean to ignore you. I just have this question. Just yeah, no, we'll we'll great. Great. thank you. Um, you mentioned that even without the new activities that are going to be happening to North Reading and the expansion of MWRA water, we need to do this. But is the service on this going to be much heavier as a result of servicing other communities? And if so, is there if there was a if there was a potential um, if there was a potential of another customer joining the MWRA, then service would increase through the town of Reading. That project is unlikely to happen. I suppose I should give Well, we put this off for your. Would this project be any different? If, would this project be any different under a scenario of? North Reading joining MWRA? Uh, no. No, the design would have changed. Yes, this was in the, this this is the timing. Was this this was in the works before. Yep. Yeah. Uh, further answer, Mr. Dox's question. Uh, in a negotiation with another community, we would be allowed to collect a fee for wear and tear, a reasonable fee for that. Wheeling charge. Wheeling charge. Yeah. Thank you. Another big project currently <coughs> under design. I believe the construction costs may be projected a little further out than FY19 would be the uh, replacement of the Auburn Street water tank. Currently, um, we have some failing paint, some structural defects on the tank, um, some OSHA violations. Um, so those would be things that we need to fix, repair, and replace. And in doing so, we'll be replacing the tank with a um, composite elevated tank. Mm -hmm. which would be constructed mainly out of concrete base and then a uh, last few steel tank on the top. Does that price estimate assume we have relocated all the electronic uh, transmitters to the new tower? Uh, so they're already off 
and that's been done dealt with otherwise. That price is for the tank replacement only. Yeah. So the answer is yes. That's just the tank. Yeah. So I know I know that the neighbors came in and a prior selectman meeting and. Um, we sort of talked about a, a pro, you know, neighborhood community process. You mentioned that we're in design. Uh, have we gone back out? Have we talked to folks? So this, is, this is the design for the Auburn Street water tank replacement only. This has nothing to do with, with, the, with the tower. With any okay. talk about a cell tower or, or um, what we're going to do with the, the cell company. Regardless, this tank has to be replaced, so that process is taking place. Um, the city replaced in place where it is now. Mm -hmm. Just the same height? Same height. The shape will just be slightly different to a more modern. We're doing a site analysis now, right? They started that process. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But it is true, Ryan, that any uh, future plan that linked the cell towers to the water tank is not part of this project. In other words, it's not comprehended in the scope of work. At some point, there may be a crossover. At this point, there's not. The design can can work uh, separate from. Okay. It doesn't preclude. Not, it no. doesn't preclude any. No. When when we get into that conversation of what happens with the carriers, then at that point, either the design for the tank will reflect what we do, okay. or we'll go a separate route. Okay. But we are going to include the neighbors in that discussion. Absolutely. Okay. Just want to be clear on that. Um, and we'll drive water booster pump station. This is an interesting scenario. We have two booster pump stations right <coughs> next to each other, one on Lothrop and one on Emerald Drive. <coughs> We're proposing to eliminate one of the pump stations, booster stations, and upgrade and replace the Emerald Drive water booster station and do some uh, distribution work where we can boost the whole area with one station, mm. reducing our operation costs, maintenance costs, and energy costs. Um, and also actually including this into our SCADA, which is our computerized uh, system. So we'll have better control over it. Uh, we will be continuing with our unidirectional flushing program, which has been a success. We started it this year. Uh, we have projected out 30000 annually for that. Can you explain that a little more? Instead of the conventional <coughs> open up a fire hydrant and let it just flush from both directions from the main, what we do is we strategically operate and close and open certain valves so we're getting flow in only one direction of okay. um, um, the water main, thereby increasing the velocity of the main so we can scour the inside of the pipe at a, at a greater rate. Thanks. So again, it, the thought is to try to knock off <coughs> any of the growths from the cast iron that might have made their way in? Correct. Correct. Um, we do by higher higher uh, velocities we're able to scour more off the tricky part is to get the right velocity not too fast because right. we don't want to scour too much off reading is uh we've just been putting together our annual our first dep sewer ii annual report and it's interesting to know and it's something that Reading should be proud about is that we're very um, involved in our I and I removal. We have been since going back at least 1998, if not further. Uh, so again, in, inflow is the uh, uh, illegal connections to the sanitary sewer exactly. from drainage. Infiltration is uh, br breakage in the pipes. Exactly. And seepage. Seepage into the pipes. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so that being said, we we utilize all of the loan grant money that we get from the MWRA. And as of today, I believe we've spent well over $4.6 or somewhere around that in, in uh, money from the MWRA. Mm -hmm. This project is the last allotment that we have from the MWRA. It was two allotments, nine and 10, which uh, mm -hmm. totaled about to 1.6 million. And we just went out to bid for the second half of that phase, the 844,000. Are we still collecting mitigation monies from uh, large-scale developments to help with the I&I? &I? Yes, as, as part of uh, what we need to do for I&I, &I, we, we impose a four-to-one removal, and in doing so, we do that with that sewer connection I&I &I fee. Ryan, is this focused on one or two areas in the town that are noteworthy, or is this kind of sprinkled <coughs> across the town? Uh, so through the years, we've done flow monitoring, smoke testing, 
dye testing, uh, TV, television oh, inspection, testing corners. and sealing throughout the town. So we can really pinpoint where our uh, problem is. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to optimize the most okay. amount and get the most inflow out, infiltration out. So all this, all this capital is within our own capital plan, not the, not the enterprise. No, some of it's in the enterprise. Sorry, it's combination. Side, and now we're getting into the, the roads and the, and the sidewalk. Uh, sidewalk construction is yearly at $100,000. I think that was just increased. Yeah. Yep. Oops. Uh, yeah. And we have a matrix that determines what, where we do sidewalk, do sidewalk projects. Pavement markings is also part of that that also increased. Yeah. Um, and that's the line painting that we can, do. Can you explain what just happened with the yellow I, ones? I, I can. <laughs> I, I, I can. I'm, I'm sure everyone Everybody's wanted. asking. Is it latex versus oil? Is that the problem? <laughs> no, no. Um, from what we can gather, and uh, the paint company has been very cooperative, um, it was whether there's a, oh, was a temperature fluctuation where they had some moisture on, on the ground. Uh, we've painted in that temperature before. We've painted in that time frame before where we have a couple hours before rain comes in. The paint is supposed to dry well before that. We had paint that went down at 9.30 in some areas. And by 12:30, it was it was still wet, and this is hours before we had any temperature change or, or weather change. So the com <coughs> the company is looking into why that had happened, whether it's a paint failure, whether it's a, you know an application error. Uh, but they will be coming back in the spring and, and repainting that. And, uh, at, at no charge. Uh, will be charged when they come back. No, oh. we didn't get charged for this one. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's uh, atypical. It doesn't happen. We don't, we don't see like it. First time I can ever remember. Yeah, we don't see a failure like that. And we've used this company before. Yes. So yes. they're reputable. Yeah. They, they're um, again, they've, they've been very cooperative in, in um, coming back and, and doing uh, work in the spring. And, and it's important to note that DPW made the decision not to come back and do work right before the winter. We have salt that's just on the ground now. It, we'd be stacking the chips again this, against us and probably causing another issue that we would be painting. So we'll be back in the spring. Uh, we have visible center lines down there now. Everyone, everyone's safe. So uh, we'll be back in the spring with nice crisp center lines. There. Okay. Basically, two companies that do the service the, the whole, for the whole state. So it's, it's, it's Yeah. And then on to our, one of our big programs that we do is the road resurfacing program. This is a combination of local funding and Chapter 90. Last year we did around 1.2 million. Um, this year, because we had a little left over Chapter 90, we're probably up around 1.3 million. We have a projected list of streets below. Um, funding, depending on funding, these are the streets that we will be doing in, in the spring, summer of 2018. We do get another allotment of Chapter 90 in the spring. And so, We'll have another list that comes out for the possibly fall or spring summer. Brian, remind, remind us what the um, number, the annual spend number was to kind of break even or stay even in terms of road condition. Is that the 1.3 number? It was just about 1.3, yeah. correct. Right. 1.6, you're going to make progress, and if it's just just use your chapter 90 of 600, you're going you're going backwards. 1.3 leaves us right at that PCI uh, 77 of what we're at now. We make no increase, but we do not decrease, right. and that's projected out for five years. I think. Mm -hmm. we'll go the, uh, I've just got um, the follow-up. Uh, yeah, it's the. Uh, yeah. No, no, the. Uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah. There you go. I, we, we talked about this already a little bit. I just want to kind of just show this this chart. This is FY18. The here we are with our uh, uh, solid waste disposal recycling program. We're still. Uh, Percentage-wise, you know, hovering around 27, 28 percent. Um, so it's still pretty good. Uh, go to the next slide. This is FY17. Actually, we ended up, I think, uh, around 30 percent. Can, can uh, you back up, Jeff, yeah. real quick? Yeah. Some interesting numbers. Yeah. There. So I'm sorry. Let's get the headers back in. Sure. That's the paper. That, that is the coal bingle uh, recycled material. Um, oh, and that's then you get the total. Then you get the rubbish disposal and the tonnage, and then the percent recycled uh, of the uh, total tonnage keeps going up. Yeah. Oh, so that th that that number represents sort of the the uh, 
what percentage the recycling material is of the total material, but it's a, it right. doesn't talk about the percentage of people who participate. Right. So, right. well, that's 100%. That's 100%? Yeah. <laughs> they don't get the trash picked up. <laughs> at all. I, you know, you don't, the, the bylaw, I mean, if people don't have the recycling out there, right. and we don't get a lot of those, those occasionally I also get a call that, you know, my you know, trash was, in, was picked up, and um, I said, do you have your recycling out? And he said, yeah, I had it out, and then also we have uh, people taking pictures sometimes, and sometimes thing, uh, things are not always as they should be, but, <laughs> but in general, in general, uh, the, the community's been really good, and I think it's reflected in the, in the percentages. And again, this is, uh, as, far as as far as communities that don't have pay as you throw, this is really high. It's this is uh, really a moment to be celebrated. If you had stopped anyone 15 years ago and said, what do you think that ceiling would be on recycling? I, I can't imagine you would get numbers like, you know, we're approaching one-third, right, yeah. of total waste volume by weight. By weight. Being recycled. Yeah. That's... Yeah. That's really remarkable, and the trajectory is still up on the order of a percent a year. That's really amazing. This was just a, I just this just showed the entire FY17, and again, okay. I think the total, if you if you go down to the end, it's well, around 30 percent. Yeah, okay. So that's still very very good. Was it, I think it was February and March. The Christmas burst. Christmas burst. Yeah, Christmas uh, recycle. Uh, oh, all, the all the cardboard yeah, boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and everything. I mean, everything is on the yeah, website in terms of what's recyclable, what's not. I mean, everything is outlined. And again, we've been doing this for for a period of time now, and uh, a high high percentage of the people really uh, again, give give the, all the residents credit. I mean, they really participate and do a good job. With this. And uh, I, I still have my plaque so. in my office of the municipal recycle of the year, <laughs> based on when, the year we went from. I think 16 percent uh, was made out of recycled material, <laughs> but we went from like 16 percent to like 30 percent. I mean, in one year, just because of the enforcement of the mandatory recycle. Have any idea where Reading is relative to? You know, we always do our peer rankings. Do you have any idea where we are relative to peers in recycle? It's not not important, but it's an interesting number. Yeah, I, I, again, for for a community that would not pay as you throw, I mean, I think. There are a couple of communities that do a little bit better. I know Gloss is one of them, but you know they have pages to throw. You got to buy your bags, you know, two bucks a bag, yeah. and that's a whole different you know incentive program. But uh, we are, but we're at the very top of the uh, the, of the non uh, page to throw communities. That's fantastic. Um, so just to uh, next slide is on the highway. Yeah, this we talked a little bit about this earlier, and I just stuck a little dump myself on there. But again, just to as far as the changes in the department, I mean, you can just see, I'm not gonna go through each one, but in just in general, um, this is over the last five years, uh, we've had supervisors retired and promotions, and um, we were right down the line through, through highway. Uh, we've hired new people coming in, and again, it's a trickle effect usually if, you know, people move up as, as promotions, as people retire, people will move up. Um, uh, parks and forestry, same thing, that's, you know, we have the retirement there, actually, uh, two people retire in the cemetery, Bob Key is a supervisor, and then Bill Jordan, a long time former, retired. And again, people are moving up. Um, Water Division, same thing, Jimmy Richardson retired, uh, and uh, Peter Isabel moved up to the supervisor, and then um, and Peter Cassie was the water supply supervisor. Those are the five supervisors over the last long five time. years that have been replaced. Well, there's four, and then the next slide will just show the engineering with, with Ryan, with uh, previous time engineer retired. So um, I think the point is here is just that there's been a lot of change over and, um, and, the, and the town is really in a good position in that um, we do a really good job and I've, I've tried to maintain an aggressive uh, professional development program. Um, people, to have these promotions, the people who do that, they've got to have the qualifications. They've got it for water, they've got to have your D2 license or D3, D3. you got to have your Class A license and move on highway. So people do that, but the town, you know, steps up to the plate. I mean, we provide training, we provide, we pay for the licenses, we provide them to go during the day. So, I mean, it's worth the town to do that, also the employee benefits. So, um, I think my professional development budget is 15, 20,000, maybe something. Not next year. Well, maybe. Well. <laughs> So, so far, so good. But I mean, yeah. but I mean that that obviously puts us in a position where we can we can you know uh, uh, do this. So. so, so your workforce seems like it was um, it was an aging workforce, yeah, yeah. and now yeah. what would you say your median age is? Uh, a lot more. less. Or? That's might have gone down by 15 years. Well, the experience yeah. walked out the door. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not supposed to talk about age. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's obviously the bunch of guys got the money saving you do. Uh, uh, you lost a lot the, of 30 years. The civil plus. engineer positions, yeah, 30 years. one or two are open. Pardon me? Um, 
Well, up there, it talks about Going civil back engineering. to 2000, since 2016, there's a senior civil position that is available, that's open, which is the minor position. Right. It was a, an assistant civil position, which was, we lost one of the engineers, and we also lost an engineering uh, aide. So have we not filled those because budgeting? Cause that to happen, or did uh, we not fill those because we can't fill them? Uh, part of part of that is true. The the latter would be um, the open senior position is, has been difficult to fill uh, for compensation reasons. Uh, but there was one position, one of the early, early I think, assistant civil was a budget budget uh, along as with as well the as engineering aid as, as well as engineering aid. Uh, the, so those two were budget. And are we looking for that to come back in? Was that one of the one of the one of the requests? One of the requests. Yeah. Yep. And again, I, you know, I mean, uh, Bob was his instructions are pretty clear. Don't be shy. He <laughs> said, as far as you know, requesting things that that you know really we yeah. had a number of years yeah, ago. That, we lost. That was the idea of the exercise. But it strikes me that <clears throat> we'll probably if we could fill those positions, we'd probably save money compared to what we're doing outsourcing. That. Talk to, when I talk about yeah. The outsourcing. Yeah. yeah um, some things you'll always do. Some, some things we're always going to outsource. Depending on the that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But you certainly have a benefit to having um, in-house staff. It would be interesting to quantify that. It would be interesting to know. I, I realize that you're always going to have outsourcing. I mean, that just kind of stands to reason that you can't be internally everything to every project. I, I, I get that. Um, it would be interesting to know you know, maybe what we need to do is rethink how what we're paying. Mm -hmm. If that's really the, if that's the hurdle, <coughs> because if that's the hurdle, and you know, so just to keep it simple, um, you know, if we're paying twenty thousand, we should be paying thirty thousand, and we raise the starting compensation, and it saves us twenty thousand or twenty-five thousand of outsourcing. I mean, I'm using ridiculous numbers, but the point is. It'd be interesting to quantify that, you know. Um, sometimes the most expensive thing you do is save money. <laughs> right. Um, that's true. Um, John, one of the complications from a further distance, obviously, than these two is you know, we have a capital plan. Um, to some degree, we can sort of assess the manpower needed to execute a capital plan, more or less. And a lot of it's on the engineers. Yeah. They have to watch what is done and supervise. Um, what's very difficult is to know when is the gas company coming in? When is the MDRA really going to do their project? When is the state going to do West Street? Um, that's so hard to predict the timing of. Um, and that work in the recent two years was much larger than our work. So it's hard to know what the right staff level is, yeah. I guess. Your point certainly well taken. Mm -hmm. though. Dan. Yeah, a general question, uh, Jeff, back to your uh, 5.7 percent projected increase in FTEs. How much of that is divided? It looked like it was mostly seasonal labor. I would assume that's mostly against the tax levy, not against the enterprise accounts. Correct. That's so none that's of that five point seven the additional is Correct. against right. okay. Correct. Yep. it's all tax levy. Yep. Um, just uh, just a couple of uh, quick slides I thought that that, that uh, you might be interested in. Uh, Z click fix is still alive and well. Um, where uh, this just gives you kind of like a little summary for almost a year. There's a number of requests that have come in, and um, you know it's a tool that that uh, obviously um, I think people utilize. Um, um, you know to call in uh, certain issues and so forth. Uh, I've got the number of categories there uh, that uh, we could take a look at. Um, they come in various ways. Uh, they come in over uh, on the website, or they come in by phone, or they come in by phone call, but. Uh, those are the different categories uh, that come in, and, uh, from potholes to uh, general questions, tree branches, snow and ice. Uh, so I think, in general, uh, it's, I think I, my personal opinion is I think it, it's a good system. Uh, it's not the end all be all. I think there's a lot of things that we're not capturing. Like we get a lot of phone calls like during the day that, at this point, um, either we're not, not entering there. So I think some of the numbers may be skewed a little bit that, you know, um, that these, these, these come in by formal mechanisms, but sometimes we may not be capturing, I guess, all the requests and all the things that come in. So I'm not sure what, I think part of the answer to that might be is uh, maybe a staff situation where, you know, where we have a certain uh, line coming in where every call, every call that comes in goes to this person and then it gets distributed so we can log that 
<coughs> requesting whatever it is. Um, I don't know. I've, I've got something I've got to talk with, with Bob about in terms of uh, going forward with it, but um, it's still being utilized, and I think, um, um, you know, um, it, it's, it's a, a tool that, uh, again, customer service-wise, I guess is the main thing. So, Jeff, so, is this, a, is this a, a combination of click it, fix it, and phone calls? Yes. Is that, that's everything? That's just every, there, yes. Can you wind that back to the header? Sure. sure. So, request or, source, different or, sources. Uh, not the read, but I think it's on the web, phone, uh, city, city oriented. You know, we get if we get a call, a phone call um, uh, at the highway garage, we'll log that in for say for a pothole, so forth. So we'll put that in. So we're trying to capture everything that comes in to get a, right. a I guess, a true picture of the volume and, and the scope. Does it work better when they when they click it? You know, when they. Uh, yeah. Definitely. I think it, it, it tracks seems, it. It seems like it right. tracks anecdotally it. you hear. It tracks it. They get a response. It comes yeah. back. Correct. Yeah. I think yeah. that that seems to be getting. That you hear over and over. People are like in stark amazement of how well that works. Yeah. So it's <coughs> like they expect it to go into a black hole and it doesn't. Yep. Um, when they use that that web application. Yeah. Jeff, can you know how many people have actually downloaded in Reading? You must get those numbers from the company. Uh, I don't think so. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we did. I'm sure sure I have we can ask them. Yeah, it's a good question. I can find out. I, I'm just curious. How many people here have C Click Fix on your phone? On your I've used phone? it. There you go. Yeah. I'd say that's about 15 percent. C Click. Well, of people here. Mm -hmm. Less than that. Yeah. So I, I think we would use. I mean, the fact that the, peop the people here are probably the most engaged folks in town, and and I saw maybe maybe one out of five. So. <laughs> You know, the fact that maybe we're not advertising its mm. um, availability mm. Um, is maybe, you know, we'd get more usage if people do it. So um, We're also looking to integrate C -click -fix, C -click -fix into uh, our GIS system as far as the work on it software. That's a good idea. Um, That'll be the next we, We've made some steps just recently, recent proposal that we, uh, we signed to, to set that groundwork to, to get that ready for us. So once we set that, work order system up, we'll be managing through the work order system and we'll taking calls in by C click fix to integrate into the work order system. So that's down the road. I don't know how far down the road, but um, that's part of the projected plan. What is the meaning today's to acknowledge? Is that the day the, 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 the petitioner gets a response back? Is that, is that what that means? Sounds long. Yeah, uh, third, third, fourth header. Yeah, the fifth header. Uh, Days to acknowledge. Yeah, that's is that the one you're looking yeah. at? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, that would <coughs> my guess would be that would be from the moment that it's clicked yeah, in logged in to the moment that it's they either response. It's, yeah. it's either changed from the open status to the acknowledged <coughs> status. And I speaking in the engineering standpoint, some of those don't get transferred over to open to acknowledged until we actually know what, what the issue is. So you'll you'll have a delay um, on some with the potholes. I don't know the, why. So scroll, scroll, scroll down a bit. Yeah. Scroll down scroll a bit. Down. Yeah. Just keep your eye on that column. Yeah, it so will one come of them in. there, you got 40, under manhole catch basin, you have 47 days. That's. Knowledge. So we have, so <coughs> the, the short answer would be, depending on who is monitoring their seat click fix, uh, they might like to keep it in an open status to make sure that they still see it. Oh, it's a, a track, to way to track it. As opposed right. to acknowledging it and keep it in the acknowledged category, right? Uh, so almost, almost as keeping a unread email. email. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the one, one, the, okay. we, actually, they wrote to be paved, Got it. and we get back to we'll say, well, okay, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look at it, we'll prioritize, blah, blah. So that you know, it may take a while to do that, but they may want to keep that open. Well, I want to keep that open until it, something happens, which could be a X period of time. So, so when you when you put something when you click something in here. Within a day, you get a, an email right. that says your, your thing has been assigned to right. so and so, and then when it's resolved, um, you also get yep. an email and acknowledgement. Yep. So, um, I think it's I think we need to do a better job of um, you know maybe this is one of the things to go out on, the we on our website one day. Take ten seconds. People will have their phone haven't done it. Take ten seconds now and download it. It's free. See, click fix. Well, the more people be, uh, who use it, and the more people who have it, the more people who use it. Yep. The more people who use it, the more customer service Absolutely. will happen. It actually so be in the iPhone never, app or the uh, Google Play. Yeah. So it's in so the I, it's in the it's in the App Store. IPhone. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, there was some publicity about it. Probably mm -hmm. trying to refresh the publicity. You know, yeah. I think that's it's as simple as that. I never heard of it. See quick fix. fix. Yep. Yeah. See quick. That's so literally what happens. And the, the cost is fixed, right? They don't charge us for how many yeah. users we have. So, yeah. right? May as well. Yeah. Yeah, just, looking in the, just looking at the phone, there's only 50,000 instances been downloaded on Android, so it's not mm. high usage. Yeah. Bob, do you have a question? Uh, just a comment. Uh, just to be clear, this program is used in a lot of departments. Gene's department, for instance, uses it. Um, and I will say when we um, centralized a lot of the work you see here, into a permits coordinator, the numbers tidied themselves up a little, shall we say. So it's one thing for people doing the work to respond, it's another thing for the paperwork to catch up to that. And when you're relying on people in the field to do the paperwork, obviously the priority is the work in the field. So, you know, as Jeff mentioned earlier, another clerical position potentially could help tidy up this right. num numbers a little bit more. And, uh, just, uh I don't need to take so much time, but uh, the, uh, just one final slide. Um, this, is, uh, this is something, a uh, new application. We started uh, uh, 2017. We began tracking our catch basin uh, cleaning operation using a custom build application. The operator enters real time data during the process of cleaning and inspecting the catch basins. The data is captured to assist us in responding to requirements for the uh, NIPTES and MS4 permit and in providing essential information needed for repairs and maintenance. So basically, um, uh, he goes out um, and inspects. We, we have that obviously it's fifty-one percent, so we've got about thirty-four hundred catch basins in terms of you know, the whole town. And he'll go to each individual one and do the analysis of each one um, and check the condition, log it in in real time. Um, that's a that's a PM once a year kind of thing. This is a, it's part of the permit, actually. It's part of our MS4 permit um, that we're supposed to be cleaning. We, we clean them annually anyway, right. but it's part of our MS4 permit. We also need to track uh, what we take out. Yeah. Uh, this was this was a, a big victory, I think, for DPW in, in that we have many apps that we utilize in GIS. This is a big one. This is um, we're starting to collect some real-time data that's really going to be able to help us uh, with our operations a highway but also track what we're taking out and quantify it um, and help assess for the next year's permit and what we need to do I think so that's all I have any other questions from the board mm -hmm. any questions from the public mark thank you guys I love the, the Click fix. Anyway, we're crazy. See click fix. See click fix. Thank you. Um, one request: the, um, the sheet you had up there that listed kind of the changes in people, yep. environments, emotions, and things like that. It would be great if, um, as part of this Excel spreadsheet, you could just kind of have like the um, I don't want to call it F T E, but looking at you've got some seasonal people and other things like that. I think um, Andy was asking that question also. We could just see it that way and just summarize it really easily across all the departments in that way. You just have a better feel. Okay. Thanks. Any other comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Musical chairs. Now to the part where I summarize by starting with something called the pillars of modern society. <laughs> You're waxing philosophical. Yes. Let me sit back. This is actually a professor in the Northwest, friend of mine, that travels quite a lot in the world. And, you know, he and, and others in his field say that these are the four most important things that a modern society does in importance, in order of importance. Um, security, education, infrastructure are things that uh, local government and schools directly touch. Um, Health care, you know, we, we certainly have some social, emotional uh, work done in the schools and the town, so we touch that area, but it's not quite as direct a touch. In order to balance this budget you've seen, and I'll get into some details tonight, um, 
I'm going to reread that first bullet point actually twice. For the first time, I, I recognize that I have to take a defensive posture about risk. Um, and that's now more important to me than the services offered to the community. I'm going to say that again. Um, I recognize that risk to the organization is more important than the services we offer, and we are a service organization. So that's a pretty powerful statement. And I so have to tell you that I don't think that statement has ever been made in writing in 25 years. What do you mean by risk? I'll get into that. Um, the last override successfully um, you know, 13 odd years ago, I was on the Finance Committee during that period, um, things were very tough for two or three years before that. I don't mean to suggest that more. Risk was never recognized as an important thing. So for instance, capital was slashed. Yep. Almost nothing. Um, that was a huge risk to the organization. So no one ever said, wait a minute, we have to stop doing some things. We have to preserve capital or infrastructure. Um, I think it's important to draw the line in the sand now and just make it real clear. The FY19 budget you will see will just have a certain flavor of that. Um, but without additional revenue, FY20, I'm very much expecting um, op optional services that do not fall into the category of security, education, and infrastructure to be removed. And I would say very candidly and very publicly, um, in FY20, uh, the municipal government will be prepared to cut some services and help fund the schools um, because it can't continue um, if you're going to preserve those top three things. Um, Lastly, and a, and a theme you've seen uh, throughout the presentation is um, we have to, we have no choice but to recognize we're in very, very strong labor markets. And the employees we have are our greatest asset and turnover of those employees is our greatest foe. Um, it is not easy to hire people right now into municipal government. It's a time in the economy where that's not a very easy <coughs> job. Stability of employment, which municipal gov government tends to offer, is not as interesting when the economy is so high. Um, some of our departments have had trouble filling positions, such as um, two that you heard about tonight. Sometimes it's money, sometimes it's not money. Um, DPW is a good example. The schools are a better example where um, the millennials are coming into the workforce, even for us now. Slower in the municipal government side, certainly, but DPW has seen more of it. Use the mic. Oh, sure. Well, it's, I, I don't know if it's going to help. Is it, yeah, it will if you talk. Let's get it okay. close. Yeah, closer. Um, I don't often like to be general, but I will be general in this case that um, millennials that we've experienced and certainly that um, you know about are less interested in money and more interested in time off, for instance. Yeah. So this is an issue we've discussed and you heard earlier with, with police especially. Um, the chief has, for the first time, had to order people in for overtime and details. That never happened in Reading's history because no one is interested in that extra money. So as an organization, we have to really take a careful look at ourselves and recognize the fact that the nature of our employees are going to change. It's quite possible that the same amount of work, because of the lack of interest in overtime and details, will take more employees. That's an unfortunate but could be factually true. Um, the culture of our, of our entire organization is excellent. I, I will tell you personally that the most satisfying thing I have in the 12 years I've worked here is, was, is when an angry customer comes into the building yelling about how stupid the employees are in town government. And if they spend some time with us, they leave realizing that's not true. They've dealt with me and other people and they realize you guys aren't so bad. So, you know, the perception out there is still pretty poor for the uh, type of employee we are, government workers, you know, good enough for government work. Uh, Reading really does have exceptional workers. You've, you've heard some of that in the presentation for the last two weeks. Um, so this, this is a really, HR is a really important area for us. Um, we have to recognize that we have to stay competitive in pay and competitive in benefits as we experience turnover. Now, here's the much-awaited FTE chart. And it's not going to match anything you saw before. I'll tell you why. Um, there are departments that have full-time employees that work 42 hours a week, 40 hours a week, and 37 and a half hours a week, depending on their job. I don't, I don't call them all one FTE. Um, 
I normalized everything to 37 and a half hours that you saw. So that's what this chart is. So it's not going to match what you heard. So the best example is facilities. If uh, Joe Huggins was to stand up and line up the employees and they were counting off, there's only 11 people. Ten of them work 40 hours, one of them works 37 and a half. That's 11.7 FTEs measured in a 37 and a half hour week, which is our most common work week. So I thought this was much purer math, but it doesn't actually count the people. Um, you see an increase of about 20 FTEs from the current year's budget to the next year's budget as requested by department heads. Um, seven of those positions were cut in the last couple years. 13 of those positions have been requested almost every year for many years, and I'm going to come back to that uh, shortly. Um, and again, you can see some departments didn't, didn't uh, request any increase in FTEs. The department you just finished, Jeff, uh, I calculated as one clerk and 0.7 of all the seasonals added up together, plus one person going from 37 and a half to 40 hours. Um, the one category of employees who I purposely left out because it's just too hard to calculate, is election workers. If there's <coughs> one election versus three election, there's a bit of a difference in FTEs. I don't think that's really a sort of a sustainable workforce that we care about. I think you've heard this also, but I really want to make a point of it. Um, there's a million dollars of revenue that comes into the general fund specifically for the town government from enterprise funds. That's water, sewer, storm water, and the light department. You can see that three departments are impacted by this. Um, as I look at positions in the general fund to eliminate, I have to consider this because I might be eliminating revenue. So I might not be re recognizing the full saving you see in the budget. I have to be honest with you that 10 or 15 years ago, I liked the way we budgeted better. On one page, you could see the salaries and you could see the offsets at the bottom of the page. So you can see the net to the town. Um, that's how town meeting used to vote it. And then the DOR told us that many years ago, cut it out, that's not what we want. We want town meeting to vote the actual total salary of the employee. And then if you lose the revenue too bad, you've told the taxpayers what that employee costs. Um, so this is a little less transparent now. The million dollars shows up in some of our worksheets as a revenue. It's directed exactly uh, to the town in these manners, as you see. Um, but I just want to remind you that not all departments, FTEs, are created equal in terms of balancing budget. That's my main point. Um, and to sort of elaborate on that, I know some questions have come up along these issues. Um, we don't <coughs> charge the school department. We could. It wouldn't really make any sense. It's another layer of bureaucracy. Um, probably 30% um, of the finance department is uh, work done for the schools specifically. Uh, that obviously is not the assessor's office or the collector's office, but very much payroll. So, you know, if we were to cost out this purely on the town side and add the schools as, as a support number, that number would grow. It doesn't matter. We're all kind of you know, one group. It's, it's not important. But it is important to recognize that some of the work the town government does hits all aspects of the organization. It's not just town hall talking to itself. It's town hall dealing with the entire organization. Here's the magic number you've been waiting for. That's what I need to cut in the budget. That figure at the bottom is a million and a half dollars. And I'm going to come back to that and surprise you. Is that based on the presentations That's that we had today? That's based on the presentations you saw. Okay. Um, the number at the bottom, the $9,500 I have to cut from accommodated costs is a cemetery item. Not a big deal. A uh, million four eighty-six is what I need to cut from the general fund. Uh, and, you know, that's not easy to just say. And I, and I do want to come back to that number. I think it's a very fair statement to say that no two of us tonight would balance these budgets identically. But we would have some core agreement. I don't know how large that core agreement would be, but there would be something. Um, we, and, I, and by that I also need, mean to, re, uh, to say myself, I need to rely on the professional staff expertise that we have. You heard it over the last two weeks. Um, for example, we have inside information such as planned retirements that you can't know. Sometimes we do things in the budgets that might make you scratch your head and six months later you understand. And that's something obviously we can't talk about. Um, you know, you do know that as a philosophy at Town Hall, 
every time there is turnover, we study the position and figure out if there's a better way to do it or a different way to do it. Obviously, if a firefighter, a police officer, or a DPW employee leave, they're pretty much going to be replaced by someone similar. Um, a town hall with lots of unique jobs, we try to split up the work differently as we, you know, honestly, we'll run into opportunities. Um, this public process, as I said to a couple of you at the end of the last meeting, has um, helped change my mind, actually, and shape some ideas. <coughs> And what it's really done more than anything else is brought the idea of risk to the forefront of my head. It's easy to balance budgets every year when you just don't really do a zero-based budget. You kind of think you do, but you don't really. Um, this exercise has been particularly helpful for me um, in that regard. <coughs> um, not surprisingly, I've had a draft list of a million and a half in cuts for some time. It has changed. Over the next two weeks, I'll be meeting with individual department and assistant department heads, um, just two on one, if you will. I will release a final budget in early January 2018 at the same time the superintendent does. I was asked some questions about that, and I don't have any strong opinions, but just for some history, again, going back um, 10 years and more, the schools used to release a budget in the first week of December, and the town would begin their work in January. Um, more recently, for the last five or six or seven years, they've done the same as us in January. Um, someone had asked me that question, so I just wanted to clarify it. <coughs> at your meeting on January 9th, I'll review the budget in public and provide you at that time a prioritized detailed list of everything that was eliminated from the budget, let's say $5,000 and I won't go to the small ones. And I'll put them in an order, a priority order, of if you want to have an ad back, as a basis for an override discussion, you'll see that list. If it's a wage, I'll add some sort of benefit cost to go along with it, and so will the schools. I think we've settled on 25% is close enough. And I want to also address uh, what was different this year. You meant in December instead of January. That's pretty obvious. None of us got our shopping done. <laughs> Um, we presented to you unbalanced budgets with no balanced budgets. That was different. But I have to show you some things from two years ago, and, and the reason I'm picking two years ago is last year we had just had a failed override, so I'm going to show you something I've done for several years I did not do last year out of respect for the voters. Um, <clears throat> something that uh, went out to the Finance Committee, was shared with the Selectmen, and ultimately the Town Meeting, which was a discussion of what was not funded. Look at that, two years ago, a million and a half. Same exact discussion we're having tonight, some of the details have changed. We listed all the positions in order and had a small discussion of them. My point is, the information that was presented to you this year was virtually the same as it's been in other years. A number of people have said to me, I like the way the budgets are being done this way, you're, you're doing it much differently. That's a communication improvement, in my estimation. It's not a difference in material covered or presented. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good. That's, that's an excellent uh, result. Um, I think we're communicating better because you're going to listen a lot more when you don't see a balanced budget and then just leap to the fact, oh, I, I don't need to look at the stuff that wasn't funded because it mustn't be very important. This gave you more of a framework of you decide from yourself, and again, everyone will be different about what's not important, what's the least important, the things I just heard. Um, all of it's important. I have a really difficult time looking at anything on the list and just saying frivolous. I'm sure some of you would have an easier time doing that, but there's not much. Um, it's particularly concerning that in public safety, um, the request is for nine additional staff in, uh, in terms of uh, uniformed officers and firefighters. That brings us up to average. That doesn't bring us up to our historic average from many years ago. And in my estimation, with all due respect to the chief, it doesn't bring us up to where we should be for the geography we live in. At 10 miles from Boston, we're near, near a very busy two interchanges. Um, or you know, in a, in a high uh, crime area in terms of between Boston and Lawrence. We happen to be in the middle of that. Thankfully, it skips over us. Um, we're a safe community, but we're not necessarily in a safe geography. 
is the, is the clearest thing I can say. I would prefer it to be an above average staffed public safety community if that were possible. And the things you've heard uh, in the last two weeks are only to bring us up to average, which is obviously an improvement. So I just thought it would be um, important for you to see that, again, the information is not significantly different in the past. It's been presented differently, and I believe it has absolutely been heard differently, which is good. Communication's better. I think that's probably the main lesson we got from the failed override um, a year and a half ago, which we need to improve our communication. I'll close by uh, citing some meetings that remain. The week of January 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th will be quite busy for anyone actually interested in all this. Um, specifically in terms of the selectmen, um, right now there's an agenda item for 9 o'clock on the 9th to discuss this, this balanced budget. We have a public hearing on Article 3 licenses at 8 o'clock that was continued, that must continue at that right. time, and it must be held at Town Hall. Um, as I have an opportunity to have some flexibility on that 9 o'clock start, I will. I just don't know how long your license discussion will take, and I don't want to mislead people. Take them to walk in on that when they're expecting a budget discussion. Um, the financial forum has tentatively and, and for quite some time been listed as the 24th. Um, the school committee is voting a balanced budget, I believe, on the 18th, although their schedule has changed here and there. Um, on February 1st, I formally turn over a balanced budget for the town and schools to the finance committee and they begin their work. Uh, and they will begin be beginning their work uh, one month earlier than usual. It's usually March 1st, sometimes the last week of February. And they've graciously agreed to uh, compress their schedule, as the selectmen did, to two meetings a week, which will be difficult. Um, and they will finish, therefore, on February 15th, which is about five or six weeks earlier than they normally finish um, in order to get information out there. I'm expecting, and it's on the selectmen's calendar, a meeting on January 30th. And the only agenda item right now is an override discussion if you wish to have it. Um, I would certainly hope by that time you'll have a full list from me and from the schools about what has been requested. And we can have, have that discussion with other elected boards. To remind the community, April 3rd is the election, which may or may not contain an override question. And April 23rd is when the budget uh, goes to town meeting and that discussion begins. So I, I want to conclude with just a statement that um, this is a tough time of year and I really appreciate the selectmen particularly uh, taking five meetings in the last nine days, I think, and for the community that's, that's come out and shown some interest. And uh, it always surprises me, all the people that are watching at home. So thank you for that. Um, we're always committed to being transparent um, when we're not transparent, it's not because we don't intend to be, it's because we don't always know the best way. Sometimes our lack of transparency is because we've deluged people with way more information than they can digest. And I'm the guiltiest of that. Um, I have a hard time sometimes boiling something down to something really simple when I know it's not simple. So again, I've, I've said this for years. <coughs> Suggestions on improved communication are most welcome. George has been very helpful in that regard, especially when he suddenly jumped in kind of new to this whole process. That's exactly what we needed. Um, Jane Miller on our staff has been very helpful yes. working with George. She's also really a communication expert. She's the one that, if you will, emceed the meeting at the high school library. Um, and I think the, the process this year by design, I guess I'll say, um, really did improve the communication. I, you know, I would be interested tonight from here from the board members what you thought of the process, whether you feel, especially respectfully, Andy, for those that have been through it before, whether you feel better informed than you did a year or two ago. And then from Andy, I'm particularly interested in how you felt as a new selectman. Um, and we can have that discussion tonight or on the night. But those are the things I'm interested to hear from you folks. And um, to be clear, any of your comments, questions, suggestions are more than welcome. Um, please get them in by early in the first week of January. I need to balance a budget and send it to you on the 4th. So as soon as you can get comments to me, the better. As I said, I've, I'm, I'm meeting with the department heads and the assistant departments over the next two weeks. That will continue probably until January 2nd or 3rd. And at that point, we'll have, you know, we'll have the budget balance. Um, I will tell you that 
new things that were suggested, if you will, whether they were cut or before or whether they were added, uh, might well take precedence over something that exists in this budget. Um, I'm trying my best not to eliminate filled positions. I always try that. I can't say for sure I will accomplish that, but I, I sincerely hope to. But just because something was done in the past does not mean it will go forward in this community. Um, that will be most apparent in FY20 when I believe we have to take a hard look at the services that you know, it's reading. Sometimes Reading doesn't know how well it has uh, in some services, but we just don't have to offer these things. They're not a mandatory thing for town government to do. Uh, I really don't want to get into details, but if you look at all the budgets and you think of what is not infrastructure, what is not security, and what is not education, you found it. Um, so that's the conclusion of my remarks, and I'm curious to know if the selectmen have any comments. Members of the board, comments? Well, I mean, just... Um um, I think the two takeaways for me um, is I, I think I now have a, a more intimate understanding of what we actually do and who does them. Um, things that we probably take for granted all the time. Um, and I think probably the community, anybody who's come and looked at these meetings or attended, probably feels the same way. I mean, we, we really, you know, took a figurative look under the hood of municipal services in the town of Reading. Um, and the other takeaway is um, uh, the talent and commitment and creativity of the people who work here in town government. Um, most of us work in the private sector. I know we were in the public sector. Um, I work with the, most, the smartest and most talented people in, in, in the banking industry. And I would hold any of you people up um, to those folks. Um, and, and what you do behind the scenes with no complaint, um, I think is, is, is meritorious. And, and you know, I, and I read through the comments you know, on, the, on the survey, and it made my stomach turn. Because I know how hard people work. And I know the commitment that people have. And I know that any of you people could leave your jobs and make $20,000 a year more doing something else, but you don't. You stay here and, you, and, you're, and you're committed to the town. A lot of you live in the town. Um, and I think that we really owe a debt of gratitude to people who work here. And, and, and right now, I'm just talking about municipal government. I can say the same thing to the people in the school department. You know, a lion's share of our teachers live in Reading as well. Um, so um, I, I think that, um, if anything, I've gotten just a, a deeper appreciation um, for the people who work here and for what this town does. And you know, I think if we really look at kind of what's the legacy this board wants to leave to the next board or to three boards down the road, is that we're really going to make a commitment to um, funding these services um, going forward um, because that's what we owe to the next generation. And, you know, Bobby talked about risk. Um, you know, uh, the biggest comment we read from uh, things, live within your means, live within your means. Um, you and, and, and Dr. Doherty, you could present a balanced budget probably in 15 minutes, right? Here's the money that you have. Here's the balanced budget. But then what you talked about is risk. What are we not doing, right? What are we leaving on the table? You know, what are we, um, um, what are we ta you know, what, what are the things that aren't going to get done? Um, what kind of response times are we going to get? Is the trash going to get picked up? I mean, we don't have to have, we can pay for trash. Other towns do. I mean. Those are the kinds of things that you have to that you have to think about, and you know it's not just balancing the budget with the revenue that you have. You have to think about what's the kind of town you want to have. You know what are the kinds of things that you want to that you want to do and you want to leave for your children. And I think that that's going to hopefully formulate this discussion. Um, and if anything, any voter takes away, if they pay ten minutes worth of attention to any of these meetings, they realize that they get a lot of value for their buck here, um, and that. If they're going to err on the side, um, you know, err on the side of protecting our services and growing the town. So that was what I learned in the last two weeks, and I'm really glad that we did it this way, and hope we do it again. So. From my perspective, Bob, I think this year tried <coughs> a different format, which is very effective. We didn't just show what we thought would be tolerated; we show what we thought was needed. 
many people watching on television see this for a month or a few meetings a year, and there's really no muscle memory baseline for them to understand the discussion. So when a budget is presented, it's not necessarily evident what's missing or what's not covered. This year, for the first time in the town side, we've done a great job, I think, to illustrate the missing pieces. Or the puzzle is missing a couple pieces. This year we showed the public what the pieces were. And I think we're aspiring not just to transparency, which is all the data, but, you know, what's in a word? I really think it's, a, it's trying to make it clear to folks what the data means and what the missing pieces are <coughs> and what the consequences are to not doing that. You talked about risk. That's the implication around public safety. There's also risk built into um, DPW if work doesn't get done on time. Um, and some of this isn't evident in the first year. Sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes, as you said, we're, we're, we got a good town, maybe not necessarily in a great geography. So we, we, you know, we're fortunate, but that won't always be the case. Uh, I think we've aspired this year to be clear and to give context. And to echo what Barry said, I, I too was troubled by the tone of, the tone of some of the comments around communication. Not that they were wrong, because I those they, they're real comments, but rather that we hadn't achieved much in the way of filling that gap. I hope these four meetings have done that. It's not the end. We know that the citizens all have busy lives, so do we, and, and the half-life of this information is pretty short. But we do want people to understand what the needs are, where they lie, what the consequences are to not doing them, and the cost, of, and naturally the cost. And in a future meeting, instead of meetings, this board will put forth its collective view for um, what a potential ballot question would be to fund some of those needs. Dan. I'll be somewhat briefer than you two guys because you've <laughs> said a lot of good things already. Uh, I would say the, the greatest benefit to me to having these four sessions is uh, it, it's taken a static list of outtakes and really put flesh and blood on it. And I've, I've seen now what the needs are that are being defined here. And the job we're going to have as a Board of Selectmen uh, is to balance those very real needs against the ability and willingness of the community to pay additional funds. Uh, that's going to be a major challenge. Uh, I'll give you one example. Uh, I just got my Social Security statement for 2018. There's a 2% COLA, but guess what? The Part B Medical eats up the whole 2% COLA, so it's another year of zero raises for folks with Social Security. Yeah. And uh, be contemplating another multi-hundred dollar expense is, is going to be difficult. Uh, on top of a <coughs> $150 a month increase that I've experienced, uh, and it's probably typical in taxes this year. So we, we have uh, an educational job to do, but there is a reality out there that is very true for some people. And however meritous our arguments may be, uh, they may not be able to afford this. Others can. And I'm hoping we can reach as many as we can to uh, proclaim the news here. Any other comments on the board? Yeah. Um, John. Um, so I'm just going to kind of cut right to the practical questions you ask. Um, I thought the timing of this was far superior to anything we've done in the last four or five years. Yeah. Um, I think the idea that we've waited till January is got to be are in our history not in our future um, it just seems logical when you stop to look at the timeline um, we're, we're in an era of outsized budgets because when you're when the growth rate of some of these expenses is automatically going to outstrip the two and a half that we got coming in and at a certain point some of the growth will expand the revenue base it will also expand certain fees like excise fees and things like that um, I mean there's a reality we are in an era when we've got to deal with the outsized budget and what that means and this is not our budget this is your budget we act in an advisory capacity but when you're done then we've got to look sometime in this case by January 30th to try to make a decision whether or not we feel as representative of the citizens that we can live with 
your budget. Um, that's kind of what an override's about, you know, and, and that's our responsibility. That's not your responsibility. Um, so we can advise away on your budget, but when you come back with it, then we've got to make a decision as to whether or not we can live with uh, the way that you've constructed it. So timing, I think, is really important, and I value the time that we have because this, yeah, I mean, literally, I would personally, I'd get started before Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it would give us more time. Um, uh, I thought that the candor of the of the department heads was was excellent, and and I say that because I have a sense that although two years ago, you know, the reports weren't that different, they were very different, and they were very different because the department heads, not because they were told, they had a sense of duty to constrain themselves and you made them not do that and I think that that was really important and I would wholeheartedly suggest that that's a process you should keep um, you and, and, and future boards and future you know town managers I think it's a it's an exceptional board it's an exceptional process because it opens uh, this is true transparency this is really what goes on and because we do it in a public setting it allows citizens who want to take the time to listen and be interested to understand what's going on. That holistic view um, is the primary difference, in my opinion, of what I've seen over the last, you know, four or five years. I, I think that it's really superior. Um, on To continue on the practical side, away from the process, but to the substance, um, the pillars, I think, are state very succinctly what our job um, as selectmen is, and that is, you know, security, education, and infrastructure. If you worry about those three things, and we manage the risk of the absence of money being spent in those three areas, then we're doing our job. I mean, you know, um, they do pay us a magnanimous salary, and, you know, we should <laughs> deliver on that. Um, that's really what citizens hire people like us to do, and we hire you know a person like you to help us along that way um, some other key things that I saw here that I think are really important um, you mentioned briefly Bob that you were not necessarily going to make your decisions around your budget on the um, on the new versus the existing and I think that that's a wise choice yeah. just because we always did something doesn't mean we should always do it and I think you have to constantly, in your process, measure this against the risk of the three pillars that we are instrumentally involved in. And so, for example, if you come to a decision that you've got to make, you've got to have a balanced budget. How you're going to do that, you know, you're going to be like Houdini, I think. You know, I mean, we know we're outsized by a million and a half. You got to, you have to come back with a balanced budget without knowledge of the outcome of January 30th. Um, so I would urge you to stay within the framework of what you laid out here, which is the, the managing the risk of those three categories. And it strikes me that from each one of the department heads, we heard things that are, that are new that directly touch all three of those and, and risk around that. And then I think the other thing that you need to do and we need to do is understand um, we have a history and a demographic in this town of what we want, what we expect, and how we're willing to spend money. Now, we cannot change that history. Um, we heard a lot of comments, you know, in a survey we did, and I thought that that was refreshing to get those. I didn't like them, but it was refreshing to have people speak their mind in a way that they needed to. Um, we have a demographic that has a certain interest in what they're interested in. Um, but we have to continue to measure that against those three categories. I think, Bob, I would just say to you, your remarks on the pillars is so appropriate. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, you know, I, I'm not going to wax philosophical. Those are all pretty practical looks at what I heard over the course of the last four meetings. Here it comes from the board. 
Yeah, yeah, John, thanks. Um, so, Bob, sorry, I have to put my glasses on here. Um, I'll, I'll uh, just make three, uh, try to fit my comments into three categories and, and, and be clear. Um, you asked for feedback from a first timer on this, um, like, like George. Um, yeah, two thoughts on that. Um, I think it was extremely helpful to get the full ask from all the departments. Um, in other words, not their balanced budget ask, but, but what they feel they needed and why they felt they needed it. So that was very helpful, um, a very helpful exercise. I think I, my, my fellow selectmen agree uh, on that. I'll agree on that. Um, I think that, um, you know, to the extent that we can uh, um, in future years to um, just for uh, easier clarity in communication to have spreadsheets and, 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 and maybe we can get this uh, next month that match the presentation so we can follow uh, along to, to the extent we can. I know you generate munis sheets. I don't know if they easily, do, you can um, do a data dump into epics with those. Um, and I think um, that would just make it easier for, uh, for me to follow along pers personally. I think as far, so the second area of comment is feedback from this board. I think you've just heard a fair amount of it. Um, I would personally prefer that uh, after tonight we let you do your job and not uh, send you individual emails that are sort of out of the public <coughs> eye um, giving our thoughts and, and ideas on the budget. Um, and I agree with uh, John and, and others and uh, on focusing on the three priorities that you listed there and, and I trust you to do to, to, to you know that would sort of be your guiding uh, and I, I, I agree I agree with I agree with that um, so I, pr I would prefer a more this general feedback for you and then you go to your work and, and, and we will leave 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 you alone um, for a while. Um, <laughs> you all heard it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, I, yeah. For 20 days. You, yeah. you, you deserve it. I mean, if we're going to give you some thoughts on the budget, I, I, I think we should do it in, 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 a, in public meeting. Um, the, the, uh, what I think would be helpful for January, and, and we've, you know, John's talked, we've all talked on this, um, is to, for the operating budget, it seems like there are salaries, expenses, and ac accommodated costs, which you've all, you've presented in the munis sheets and you presented it elsewhere, and then there are, are uh, capital costs, like for facilities and DPWs. <coughs> to see all those in, in Excel spreadsheets, yeah, there may be 60 pages of them, but at least it's all out there. And then the, you know, just to put the, uh, uh, the ad, I think your idea of an ad, ad backs are, is a great one and just have those in a different color. Um, and and the, as far as the FTEs are concerned, I think it's great that you um, you adjusted it to 37 and a half hours per week. But if an employee works a 40 hour work week or a 41 hour work week, then they should be a 1.1 FTE. Uh, you know, we have to be honest with the employee and, and, and for the public. So, so I, I think that that would work well. Um, and uh, lastly, I think we need to be very clear on for the ad backs, what the community will get for those ad backs and what they won't, you know, is sort of the opposite is, is true. Yeah. What they won't get, for example, I think the police discussed that um, they'll get mo you'll get more um, feet on the street uh, it, it, with more police. And if if we don't add those, you'll get 
um, fewer people che checking traffic. I'm going to speeding. I'm going to regret saying that. <laughs> um, but and I think that you'll get uh, you'll continue to have a police force that is um, slightly stressed, and I'd you know rather not have that. I think that's a cost too, um, which should be noted. So that's that's all I got. Okay. I wanted to ask a follow-on on your security concept. Is that only physical security, or do you put fiscal security in there too? Because our I would say it's long-term planning as well as physical okay. security, as yeah. well as operational yeah. uh, security to our finances. You know, sort of generally speaking, the biggest risk we take right now is our employees are doing too much work for FTE. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that in any other way. Other than <coughs> as there is turnover, as people retire, we can't replace that. Yeah. It just it doesn't exist in the workforce anymore. It, a rare exception, we're able to do it, but we're going to run out of that option, I think. Um, let me ask the board a question. Um, I was purposely vague and irritating at the first meeting. And I could have shown you some of these summary charts, but I wanted you to listen. To all the departments. Right. Yeah. Would you have preferred to see, for instance, the page that's up here now, um, listing FTEs, and then that was all right. at the no, beginning? Because you know, I no. think it would have distracted you. I think the way you did it was was fine. because it it forced us to listen. Right. Yeah. And then the num the number takes care of itself. You did after. the bottoms up, which is the only right. way you can do this. Top down, everyone stops listening after you get the title. Okay. Right. I wanted to try it this way. That was my belief, but. I apologize if it irritated you, but no, no. too bad it was the right way. No, I, 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 I would have listened either way, either way, Bob. Um, the, the only thing that would have helped me is, you know, seeing the FY18, FY19 FTEs so that what we were given beforehand in the Munich sheets, we could easily follow along, more easily follow along with the talks I, I, I got. Yeah, a uh, year ago, um, I think it was just a year ago, we got away from using Munis for FinCom and Town Meeting mm -hmm. for that reason. Yeah. Um, the Munis reports are not user-friendly, quite honestly. Um, but to have done what I'll, I'll need to do during the month of January to produce handmade documents for you two weeks ago, I don't think it was physically possible, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, what we create is Excel spreadsheets out of Munis for all the things we discussed. We then create a Word document and cut and paste into it all the Excel spreadsheets and create all the Word content. So that's a very manual process. That's the only way we can do it effectively. Um, I, I didn't get many comments, but those I got um, were that the format last year was much better. First of all, it's much shorter. It was much more concise. It said, here's a division, here's what it does, here are the amount of employees. And we still don't have FTEs sort of mathematically categorized. Um, but we'll include it in the text. So ideally, I would have loved to present the budget in that format. It just wasn't physically possible, and certainly not if you're going to start before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Unless we start well, I, you know, I, I think that all the material that the department heads gave us gave us what we need to build our own executive summary. I mean, it's there. I'm just trying to get you to do it instead of me. Um, <laughs> so, but, you know, kind of the point is that... Um, Knowing as you listened that it was all there is kind of reassuring. It allowed you to listen, knowing you could go, right. knowing you'd have that, and then you know you could take it take it apart. I mean, every one, each of these, everybody had their own style, yeah. but all the material was there uh, that was necessary. So, yeah. um, I, I thought it was especially important to let each department use its own style. Yeah. Um, in the past, that's not been the case, and that won't be the case when a budget goes to FinCom and Town Meeting. The only other comment I'll close on, we spent a bunch of time talking about FTEs, and of course that acronym stands for full-time equivalent. <coughs> Equivalence is the operative word here. The equivalent to what? Bob, you've described that there are at least three different time standards that people work on. I'd also point out that not all of this work is level of effort. Some of this is fixed scope of work, and you subtract somebody out, you take out more than that proportion scope of work. They may have a particular skill, particularly in the technical trades. Some of it may just be feet on the street, you're getting more of it. So 
the level of effort is interesting, but not always, in my mind, dispositive. What you, what I look at is the total spend and the total benefit. And sometimes the benefit isn't just equivalence. It's you're getting a fixed amount of scope of work, and that's particularly true in, in DPW. But I think it's also true elsewhere in the organization. I think the way you homogenized it to that to that point exactly, yeah. it, it simplified it. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that it's standard and you understand it, and it can be judged against what you were doing last year, and you did that. You homogenized each year, um, so that works. One of the things I'd just add is that um, based on your comment about new versus old a in relationship to managing the risk of the three pillars that you described, I almost think it demands that you go to zero-based budgeting. Yeah. I, you know, I hate to even say that to you because I know it's, I know what that means. I mean, it's a beast. But I, I don't, I actually think if that, if you're going to stick to your guns on that, it's potentially <laughs> disruptive to, yeah. to the employees. Right. Yeah, that's, um, that, that's the only downside. You know, what you're asking for essentially is me, for me to list every line item in the, in the budget and mm -hmm. prioritize it. What's the very first thing we do? Every year. Hire a town manager, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and everything that would follow. Yeah. That's logical, but in a, especially in, a, in an organization with unions, it's impractical. Well, some of that, it, that's where your zero base begins. Yeah. Those are plug numbers. Yeah. Those have to be plug numbers because you have, you have no control over those. Um, right. And so to that extent, it's not really zero base budgeting yeah. okay. for that exact reason. So I'm not suggesting that you tear it all down and go line by line because some of it, you can't. Um, but when you think about the new versus the old, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, we heard a lot of a lot of interesting stuff that matches up to those those three pillars you talked about. And so the, the concept of zeroing in, zeroing down on those areas that under which you have control, I think is you know maybe the piece that you have. To well, the thing is, if you, if you're being asked to live within your means, right? then basically you have to be able to have the power to shuffle the deck and prioritize the things that need to get done. And obviously it doesn't mean that you're, everybody's starting out at, at the same place. It means you have the ability, not only the ability, you have the responsibility to basically say, well, you know what, we're, we're going to not have B because we really lack a lot in A. And, and so that maybe that's what your balanced budget looks like. And That's what zero-based budget people does will, for you. And, exactly. and people will look at that and say, oh, I, I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, um, which is, I think, a lot of what a lot of people, will, when they see that, I mean, it's clear if you're prioritizing, prioritizing public safety um, in, in education, well, there's a lot of, in, in infrastructure, there's a lot of things that we heard over the last two weeks that are not that. And, you know, so um, that that's what you have to do when you're only given X amount of dollars to work with. And... You know, if that's what it looks like, that's what it looks like, and then... I think an important message for people to understand, and it's, it's not easy, is we do live within our means. We have to by law. Right, yeah, right. Other types of government, other levels of government, yeah. do not have to live within their means. Nor, nor are they We open. are not the same as the federal government in that regard. State government somewhere in between. Um, they have to have a balanced budget, that, but they're a lot more creative than Sharon is about what a good balanced budget <laughs> yeah. is. Um, so, you know, I thought that live within your means comment was interesting, and I understood what it meant. But the, you pointed out exactly the flip side of that is, okay, Mr. Resident, Mr. Customer, and Business Owner, you have to live within the means of the services we can afford to offer you. Yeah. Right. That's been the message that has not been delivered to the right. community in quite some time, and it's an ugly one to have to deliver. Yes, and is that a risk that you're willing to take? Mm. Right? Yeah, so it's really hard to communicate, unfortunately. It is. People are going to hear it. Well, that's not his person. risk. That's our risk. Well, yeah. it's our collective risk. Because, you know, he serves at the pleasure of the board. We serve at the pleasure of the, right. of the citizens. So it's, it's a difficult message to get across plainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bob, I, I agree. I, we, By definition, we live within our – towns have to live within their means. Um, the, the, the question is uh, what kind of means do the town – does do the residents want to provide for and for what services? So it's not – you know, the public sector is very different from the pri private sector in that regard. In some ways, you, you just can't 
the comparison from the private sector to the public sector doesn't doesn't work, and this is a, a good example of them. Um, something you said makes me think of perhaps walking back my statement about nice Excel spreadsheets with color codes and things like that. Thank you. Uh, down to the salary <laughs> level. No, yeah. because because I think obviously we want to be transparent. Uh, to the community when we come out with with the budget but I think there's a personal aspect about, about this that that you, you reminded me of and that is if you change priorities for a level services budget and that means that you may have you know if we end up with the level sir or I'm sorry no override and you end up sh shifting from one department to another and it means layoffs um, I think perhaps FTEs by department general FTEs by department instead of listing someone's position as um, it, you know an add-on that I can see how that would get complicated and not be good for morale does that make sense yeah I have to create a budget that it's not only balanced, that it can actually run the town satisfactorily without an override. Right. That's my job. Um, an override can add things that people may want, or they may not. Right. I may want them too. Um, and, I, and I could take a much more severe approach this year and say, we're going to stop doing B, as Barry right. said, in order to do A better. Right. Honestly, I think that would be seen by the voters as a threat. You're just threatening us. No, no, no you're just giving so. a choice. You, I mean, those are, that's the way life is. Uh, so I think we're one year away from that. I, I think I, I can balance a budget. I guarantee you, you're going to see things, all of you are going to see things that you don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't either. But the reality is, is that there's only X amount of dollars. Right. There's only X amount of things you can do. Right. And, right. and I think the mistake that we made years and years and years um, that we rectified this year is that we hid the true cost of running the government from the voters because we, we, didn't, want, we didn't want to ask them for any more, yeah. right? And so, you know, those discussions that we had in public for the last two weeks looking under the hood, nobody ever heard, right? And what that does, and, and, and that to me is is the ultimate non-transparency because to run the government the way you need it cost you know that's what it cost and we said well we'll 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 get it done with less and you know you times that by 13 years now we are in the position of of, of where we are so you know I, I i'm not saying you have to lay out an austere budget just so people can kind of feel they got hit over the head with it but we need to be just just I'm asking you to be honest, right? And 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 I think people will will trust that, and then they'll make the decisions about what they want to add back in, or what they want to spend, and what they want to get. Yeah. Uh, Bob, one more request I would have, and I, I think the board would appreciate this. As we uh, move down to January 30th, uh, we're going to be discussing not only potential putbacks, but sustainability measures. Uh, last time we did an override, it was like an eight-year sustainability that we were looking at. I'd like to see a number of options presented, maybe position by position, of what a two-year, four-year, six-year, and eight-year sustainability cost would be in terms of benefits, et cetera. When you say um, sustainability, what do you mean? Oh, longevity. It, what, what kind of uh, money do you need need to have to fund that position for the eight I years? Give, uh, let taking me just into account. Put one example on the table. Um, the Arcasa grant runs out. Yeah. In what is 15 months after this next budget will start. Mm -hmm. So it's fine for this year. I don't have to do anything. Um, but then, yeah. That doesn't mean you won't see it as an override request because it needs to be funded at some point. Um, mm -hmm. For the first 15 months, the ARCASA funding, if you will, in an override is free for something else. So I think last time we were too complex and if you will got a little too cute yes. on the sustainability yeah. We, yeah. but I agree with you we didn't Dan. explain it's it well disingenuous to ask for an override have a have one succeed offer the services and then in two years be saying well, we can't afford this right. anymore so we have to find a way to avoid right. that yeah. I agree I, I think the mistake we made last time is that we 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 thought that 
if we were honest and transparent and upfront about what we wanted to do, um, we can we can say with certainty to the voters is that we're not going to bother you for another yeah. eight or ten years. And I think that I think people people want to be continue to continue to be asked. Yeah. So I look at it as you know obviously you don't want to do an override and then two years come back and say oh you know it ran out right, right? so you want to you want to have some length of time but in my mind um, it lasts until it doesn't. And then we come back and we do the same process again and lay out the facts again and ask the voters again and prove to the voters again this is what we've done this and this is why we need the next one you know if, if in fact that actually happens so i would actually not put a long-term horizon out i would sort of maybe do sort of a intermediate a, 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 you know sort of okay a minimum one mm -hmm. but not to say it's going to last you know going forward because you know if it doesn't then we have to make the case again, and if we're successful, the voters will agree. If we're not, they won't. So, you know, um, I, I, I think that, you know, we should really put forward what we want to do. Obviously, the cost is the one thing that's not going to be, you know, we have, to, we have to sort of, it's only good for the first year. I think people will understand that, um, you know, what well, cost is not going to get spent in the first year, it will be in the second year. But I think we have a lot, of de a lot of things that we can show folks that, okay, this is what would get put back. Right, um, and you heard from all the department heads about um, what they do and and what would potentially be lost if we don't. So, anything else like that, Bob? Like our casa uh, on the school side, yes, but on the town side, honestly, I nothing comes to mind that's as obvious as that. Um, schools tend to have more grant funded positions. They may wish to find I mean, grant funded is a potential yeah. candidate for that. Well, you know, the key to this too is you balance this budget is to not take hostages. So, in other words, you don't have you don't know, make a cut that you know completely isolates you know one form of government it's got to be blended yeah. across in order to be able to make it work because if you take hostages you know it gets perceived that you're just trying to scare people into doing something and yeah. I frankly think that's the worst thing you can possibly do is scare people into Doing something, you got to give them the opportunity to pick and choose. And you know, hmm. you know what you mentioned earlier is maybe in order to be able to manage the three fundamental pillars of the government, you're going to have to trade off some services that you know heretofore have been present. But that's not going to cripple the running of the town. It's going to change because. As somebody said, everybody's got to live within their means, whether that's the town or whether that's how people utilize the town, you know, within the means of what they have to do. I think what it gets down to is people just want a certain amount of clarity as to what they're getting or what they're paying for. And I think that you're in a perfect position to be able to do that, first in a balanced budget, and then we have that opportunity on the 30th mm -hmm. to lay out... Um, what they're getting for what they're paying for and I and I do think we have to I understand sustainability but I think we got to be careful that we don't make it too complicated because we made it too complicated it was last time. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's no two left. ways around it it was it was more complicated yeah. than it should have been you and that's yeah. because we we live on this playground yeah. and to us it was like oh this is yeah this is straightforward we, simple. we have to you know <laughs> step outside of looking our at it yeah who aren't in these rooms every right. night. That's exactly they go, right. What the hell are these guys talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I get it. There's too many moving I mean, pieces last anyway. time. Yeah. Um, so, so I think to, I'd be careful to that follow as well. up on Dan's question and, and ba Barry's comment. Are, is, are we looking, f Barry, are you suggesting something like that Bob do a uh, roughly two and a roughly four year well, projection, uh, uh, knowing or maybe two to three and four to six or something like that? I mean, I would, I, I mean, I think anything less than four is not, you know, it's like, uh, we need to last a little bit, but not five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, that, that, that it's, a, it's actually a fairly simple exercise. Whatever I yeah, do, yeah. Times I, I'm just right. suggesting right. a couple of increments <laughs> right. well, we can maybe agree on. Right. Yeah, the right. right. Yeah. I mean, once if you pick a number, and let's just say it's a million dollars, if an override is passed at a million dollars, that means that the revenue goes up for a million dollars forever. Okay, that's it's, correct. It's not like next year, and then we got to go back and do it again. So if what's built into the budget 
are things that are sustainable inside of a number. In other words, you got two and a half. So the, so the million comes and then two and a half comes on top of it. It's when the expense line crosses the new revenue. Correct. Yeah. So that, th that just becomes arithmetic. So the sustainability thing doesn't have to be complex. But that's what that's what drove the ask being as high as it was. I, well, that's because we were trying to insulate people for right. so long. We well, there was a lot it. of things. We'll that that drove, a lot of things drove exactly the ask the as high as it was. Yeah. Yeah. Sustainability was part of it. That's right. I mean, we slashed a number that was handed to us um, as a request from the school committee, and it still was a number that was you know outsized from the voter standpoint. Um, so, what do we want to do, John? With, with I mean, as far as this sustainability, what are we asking Bob for? for? Are we uh, as a group I, I'll actually going in. answer that it's um, I, I could have just showed you something it's not hard I'm not going to do an in-depth detail no 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 I, I understand but what we did in the past was we looked at our sort of annual budget hmm. um, accommodated costs I just reminded myself look like they're going to grow around six percent a year yep our revenues are going to grow about three percent a year yeah yep. so by definition that means at some point accommodated costs cross. are squeezing the operating budget right. by x dollars a year yeah I'm not going to say a number because I'm not sure I'm right, but there's some number that is a good annual number. Right. Yeah. Last year we moved mm -hmm. it out to eight or ten years, so it was a big total. Right. right. And then you would index the cost of each put back. Budget. Yeah, no, I get that. I, 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 I guess yeah. I'm trying to get a sense from the board That's something to you, you how, how, how you can easily discuss on the third year yeah. before. We'll, we'll figure that out. Okay. The Here's the I'm just asking for the wrong expenses for okay. an override, and then how long do you want it to go based on? And, and the thing is, the other the other thing that's going to determine how long it goes for is if any you know if our economic development efforts start right. to pay off, we have new growth that we never had before. What that does is yeah. that it basically pushes out the next time we have to ask people, because now our revenue is growing to the point where we can cover those costs. So, you know, we're assuming you know a basic, general kind of growth but god i'm hoping that it's three or four times that in two three four years from now yeah. because how many yeah. projects gene 16. 16. right yeah. so i mean but the thing is they're all going to have different timelines they're all going to uh, come in at, 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 at they're going to be different levels but hopefully that's the part that you know gets the traction yeah. so that this one hopefully becomes the last one for a while right because we've we've augmented our ability to raise revenue so you know, again, you can't promise that. You can't bank on it. You can't budget it. But you could, you know, you, you, you can you can pray with it, <laughs> um, and and you can nudge it along. And that's exactly and a lot of the stuff that we've been doing. Absolutely mitigates the sustainability part. Right. No question. And so that's why I'd rather get, let's put it what we need, and then you know what I, I think that our economic development efforts are really going to be successful. It's certainly going to. I mean, the, the amount of projects in the pipeline are going to change that, right. both in the form of tax revenue. Fee, re I mean, excise taxes. We saw it already. Meals seen tax. It already. Yeah. You know. I mean, all of those things start to come into play. But make no mistake, if you look around at communities in our general geography that have similarly situated economies, um, they are not afraid to come back to the voters with things that they need. They're simple, they're small, they're straightforward. It's a yes or it's a no. So we shouldn't be afraid to do that. When you make it too complex and you make it too big and you wait 14 years, right. yeah. um, I, you know, these are, the, these are the mistakes we've been making. It's you can't least. be waiting mm -hmm. 14 years. Practically speaking, it's a linear problem. Two and a half goes up. Costs go up faster than two and a half. There's a crossover <laughs> place where you can't stay even. It is much sooner than 14 years, and so we've got to acknowledge that. We have a lot of ground to make up because of the fact right. that we didn't. Andrew, do that, I would say one thing. I, I think that any estimate of sustainability is qualitative. It cannot be quantitative because you don't know what the future holds. Mm -hmm. Sure. The public will inevitably see it as maybe not a guarantee, but some form of insurance. And I, I think all you can do is to say it's directionally correct. I'd be really nervous about doing anything more than. You know, doing the quick math of where incremental revenues, incremental expenses right. come in, it looks like it's X to Y, and leave it at that. Because anything more than that's going to be taken as some sort of an assurance, and I'd be really nervous. No, no, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't mean to imply that. I was just tr trying. There seemed to be um, some disparity between what what Dan was asking and what and, and Barry's follow-up, and I just wanted to, didn't want to give 
Bob mix mix messages. Um, any comments from the public, George? George, George Catchin, Colton Road. So at the risk of making some stupid comments, because I'm still trying to digest all this, and your last comment, Bob, may have answered some of my questions, but when we talk sustain sustainability, we're talking about maintaining level services over years coming Correct. in the Multiple future. Years. And um, presumably, as you said, or just arithmetic, as John says, you can say it's X percent per year is going to go yeah. up on everything. But maybe for the public standpoint, it's talking about that, but then also talking about the add-ons. Add in other words, make it very clear that, okay, expenses are going to go up. You know, it's going to, the, the deficit here is $2 million, and with revenues up, the, the net effect is $1.5 million. But I like your risk that you talk about. And if you talk about the risk of not doing some of the add-ons, and you know, having that, and um, obviously every, I think this would be what would happen, happen anyway, but I'm trying to get my head around it. So by not doing certain things, by not getting four or more, four or five uh, additional policemen, which are not in that number, mm -hmm. but not, when you don't do that, you take certain risk. When you don't educate our kids, you take the risk that some of them are at home with their parents and uh, drugs or whatever. So there's a lot of these risks that I think need to be laid out, but that's an add-on. So in other words, have it clear that it's, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't like the word sustainability. I know it means, I had to think through it here, okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm slow on this. Sur level service, okay? We want level service. Sustainability, I don't know if strikes Maintaining me. level service over numerous years, I guess. That's yeah, but then it's right. going to go, it's, you know, X percent is that amount needed. Yeah. Your 20, um, the 28 million, that's about 2 million up. It's yeah. going to be 2.5 or 3 million for FY20, et cetera, et cetera. And then the public looks upon it as being a surplus now. Mm -hmm. And so it gets well, a little we'll debate. We'll debate it. Yeah. But I think, it, you know, ha again, having very clear separation mm -hmm. and, you know, using the risk concept, I think that's great. Yeah. You're risking this. You're going to have more potholes. I mean, it's like uh, the train wreck just now. Mm. They didn't spend the money, right. and the risk of not spending that money on safety measures resulted in far more costs than they're going to have. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Mark Doxer. First, uh, three points. One, very good discussion tonight. I think very productive, very helpful, um, and get together. Second, I think the idea of a close to somewhat zero-based budget that establishes the priorities. Absolutely makes sense. It's the only way to take it forward. Third, on the concept of risk, I think that that's a very valuable approach to lay out. But I also think that context is something we want to keep in mind also. What I mean by that is that over the last several years, we've endured some pretty strong cuts in people, in services offered. It's resulted in people working ridiculous hours or high product, crazy productivity, things that aren't, sorry, the word sustainable, they can't continue. But we've gone through this process for a number of years and we've lost things. How many people know, for example, you know, last year's budget, there was a loss of a firefighter and a policeman. As we talk about, gee, we need this, and the department heads came forward, many of those things were already cut in the last few years. I think I just want to make it clear so that everybody understands that, first of all, there, there's been Severe looks at things already. Um, you've laid out very nicely, Bob, kind of where, you know, where it is. We not just cut to the bone, we cut into the bone. And that's where it gets problematic in some areas. And you know, it's not that, I'm not trying to paint gloom and doom, I'm just saying that this process and not asking for money, not asking for an override sooner and trying to, you know, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out, um, goes so far. Probably gone past that point a little bit. That's, that's the reality of where we are. I think laying out the risk on one side and the context of where we came from, some of the cuts that took place is important. Um, as it relates to, to these charts and the process, I think the process actually is, it started out very broadly, now it's coming into focus very nicely, which is great. I'd love to add some context to these also, even looking back a couple more years, just to make sure people understand 
there's been cutting. We've lost services. People, we've lost projects. Now what we're doing is coming back and saying, look, there are only certain things that can happen with the yeah, budget that we have, and then those add-ons are the opportunities. Risk is absolutely a critical element of saying, hey, here's what you're not going to get. I think people need to also understand, here's things that we've already lost. Just make sure you understand that as context. Yeah. Thanks. That's good. Good point. About you know, semantics are very important. I sort of agree with Mark. Um, in this room, this, this discussion makes sense. Outside this room, we have to be much yes. simpler, which is fine. Um, an important concept for us all to think about is the word cuts. When a police chief asked for a new police officer and statistically proved why we didn't do it, was that a cut? No. Maybe it really was. <coughs> We're asking for four police officers or five police officers. Um, how many of them were cuts? Well, based on the math he showed you and math I could show you, all of them were cuts. They were never done and they should have been. But then you start getting into credibility and, you know, all that. But it's, it's not easy. We could have hired police officers all along and not done something else. Right. Um, it's all a balancing act. It's... You know, you remember the exercise I know Barry does where FinCom had a meeting at the senior center and said, what services can you live without that you use? And over the years, we got exactly zero responses to that, which shocked me. That's the problem in a nutshell. A service can be used by 100 residents, and to them, it's the most important thing we do. And the other 25,000 may not care. What's our opinion supposed to be? That's, that's the balancing act of, of town government. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree with Mark, and I take your point. Cuts is the difficult concept to wrap around. You know, I've told you of these 20 FTEs, seven were cuts of actual positions in the last couple of years. Um, I will also tell you the majority of the 13 that's left have been requested for many years as a deficiency in the organization by not having not suddenly we woke up this year and said, oh, let's ask for some things. So I just wanted to throw that in. Well, you know, to that point, saving, I said this earlier, saving money is sometimes the most expensive thing you can do. And this is a clear demonstration that over 14 years of saving money over and over and over again, we found ourselves with a very expensive problem. And that is what happens. Yeah, and to put it in context, I don't know the numbers. Bill Brown knows some of them. Whoops. Um, the FTEs in municipal government 30, 40, 50 years ago were higher than these numbers. Much just higher. Just to be really clear. Uh, yeah. TPW used to have about 120 or 25 employees. They're down to 40. Technology and equipment obviously helps them do their work more efficiently. And, and that, you know, capital for labor kind of substitution is, is different in different departments. Um, I don't That's the microcosm of the U.S. economy, by the way. Police and fire <laughs> were much higher also in the past. Now, I would argue oh, that technology was that? has helped them, <laughs> but compli complications have hurt them. There's much more work to do now as a police officer or as a firefighter EMT than there was 30 years ago. Um, so, you know, I'm very happy with the efficiency, generally speaking, of all the departments. Um, it's really, honestly, at the point where we'll always try to squeeze more out of it. There's just not much left. <coughs> yeah. Uh, we're sort of, in a sense, the people in the bubble, and we talk to each other, and we, we speak an inner, maybe a code. We, we, we understand these cuts. We know the history. We have to be very taxpayer-focused. What does it mean to them? Mm -hmm. What would these cuts translate into your life? And I think the more we focus that way, the better off we'll be. Yeah, I like Andy's comment about yeah. um, what are you going to get? I mean, I yeah, what are you going to get? What's it going to cost you tonight? Right. List the thing you're going to add back and explain it. I think that's really important. We are all going to know what it is. Yeah. Other people that see a list aren't necessarily. But we speak in tongues here. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments from the public? Anything else from the board? Thank, we thank you. Have another agenda. Oh, we do. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you both. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Take two minutes just to clear the room. Uh, <coughs> 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 <coughs>
try to shop. Oh, we have a corn. There we go. Guys, front and center here. Get over here. <laughs> right. And so I was, yeah. We look, I looked at the calendar and I said, oh, almost. And they just couldn't do it soon. Yeah. Is that just like candy cane or is that like chocolate? And you candy cane. Eat four nights every day. Yeah, you take it. Yeah. No, it's not chocolate. If it was chocolate, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to really got to maximize the bad calories. Chocolate's good for you. It's part of our cavity program. It's broad. <laughs> Let's just look on text. Actually, it's like like George. Here. And I ran my tax numbers. Now, he, he's got a higher income situation. I think the average elder is going to say hundreds. All right, the last topic for tonight is a discussion uh, regards a Reading Fire Department uh, settlement. Go, yeah, I know. Turn it back over to Bob. Um, thank you. And Chief Burns uh, stayed if you have any questions. Um, just to be clear, at the outset, illegal settlements, settlements sometimes down, sounds bad. This is money coming into the tank. Uh, so a tanker rolled over on I-95 uh, in March of this past spring. Um, by law, we are allowed to recover our costs from such a tanker. Um, however, um, trucking companies and others have lawyers, so they didn't just write a check. Um, it took several months of negotiation with our attorney and their attorney to come up with a proposed settlement, which is uh, not the full cost, but it's the best we could do. And I, I think Greg is at about 65% or so of the cost. Approximately, yes. Okay. So, yeah, minus legal fees, maybe 50%. Better than nothing. Town Council suggested if we took this to court, it would cost far more than whatever it is we think we're leaving on the table, even if we wanted that. So this is a proposed settlement that would require um, your approval. And, and lastly, um, these funds will go into the general fund and become free cash at the end of the year. It doesn't go back to the fire chief's budget. He had to incur expenses, and that's just the way it is. Okay. Bob, this property was not within Reading. Reading rendered service, but it was not. But it didn't have was to it be. Wakefield, was it? Yes, it was actually in Wakefield. Okay. Do you know if Wakefield also had claims against the trucking company? I know Wakefield uh, filed claims um, against them as well. I don't know how far they pursued it. We just stayed with it. We, we build for our time up there and for uh, the use of our apparatus. Is it common for Reading no. Fire to, to build in that regard? That. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the fire chief mentioned just in passing during his budget that he's in charge and responsible for recovering mm -hmm. money from FEMA or MEMA. He's a bulldog. Right. You know, it's just like it's his money. Um, you know, carefully using your time along with um, fellow Mike and DPW especially, um, FEMA, and me and FEMA especially keeps changing the rules, changing employees, and sometimes it takes you two years of diligence with an obvious intent that maybe Reading will just stop. Yeah. Greg does not stop. Good. Okay. Chief, Chief, can you kind of estimate how many hours you spent on this? On, on this? Just curious, I mean, you know, ballpark. Probably, you know, it was probably 8 to 14 or something like that. Hmm. Okay, any other questions for the board? No. This is, do we have a motion? So do we uh, approve both the settlement and the release form? Is that, would that be an appropriate motion? Um, yeah, uh, okay. as presented. Uh, move to accept the settlement and, and associated full and final release form be, uh, for the uh, ish, uh, the uh, case between the Reading Fire Department and the Weissen Trucking Company. Second. The motion, I have a second. Any further discussion? Oh, you're not going to read it? No, I was told not. <laughs> I was, was going to suspend it. Only the bonds. I see. Yeah. All those in favor of the motion, please yeah, raise your hand. Yeah, he can sign the one that's in front. We have five zero. Uh, is this the signable one? Yes, yes. With the three B three on it. Yep. Now, is that the one that calls for the notary and all that? Yeah, we'll do that. Yep. Yeah, we're we'll good. All right. So you have something Here, to sign. You. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Any other business come before the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Okay. Yeah. Just have to be blue or black. Mr. Now. Berman seconds. For any further discussion, all those in favor of adjournment. We are yes. four, five, zero, Mary. Yep. Oh, I think it's I, unanimous. Yep. At Who's the holdout?